along with Joe Garagiola. Welcome to Yankee Stadium in New York on a magnificent day. And as far as the Yankees are concerned, the sun is really shining. They have beaten Detroit six out of seven times, pulled one out of the fire last night on a home run by Gary Ward in the ninth inning. So it'll be Frank Tanana going against Dennis Rasmussen. Rasmussen, in a sense, just recently called up from Columbus, shows you what's been going on with New York. Even though they've won five in a row, even though they leave Toronto by two and a half and Detroit by three, the Yankees are usually in a state of flux. They've had 30-some-odd roster changes. It would take Philip Roth a good day to write the story of the Yankees and Columbus. What's going on now? Well, Lou Pinella has just come out from a meeting with George Steinbrenner Let's find out about it, and we'll go to Joe. When we walked into the ballpark this morning, there were four Yankees on a disabled list, but, Lou, you were having a meeting with George Steinbrenner, the owner, and I had to wait for you. Can you tell us anything at all about that meeting? Well, we decided during the course of that meeting uh, to uh, put uh, Ricky Henderson on the disabled list. So he's not 100%. Uh, uh, we're going to give him a chance to... Uh, uh, get some treatment, stay behind, get, take some batting practice, and uh, uh, we can uh, 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 put him on the disabled list as of uh, last uh, Sunday and, and have him ready for the Kansas City Series. Who will uh, replace him? Uh, well, uh, we got Dennis Rasmussen that's going to pitch today. Uh, he's uh, had two starts down in Columbus. Uh, we went to four-man rotation. He wasn't, uh, wasn't going to pitch here uh, except uh, get some work out of the bullpen, and uh, we decided to give him two starts down there, keep him sharp, and he's going out the mound of the day and do a good job for us. All for can it. you quickly tell me why you think the Yankees can hold on? Well, we've got good pitching staff here. Uh, I like our starting staff. Uh, I feel that our starters are as good as uh, anybody's in baseball. Uh, we've got a, a good bullpen here anchored by uh, Dave Brigetti, and we've got that great constant de defense. Uh, we played very well defensively, uh, and uh, when you have uh, a combination of good pitching, solid defense, and uh, the timely hitting that we've gotten, uh, you're a tough team to beat. That you are. Okay, Vin, there it is. So come see the Yankees, and whatever you do, buy a scorecard. We'll check the starting lineups and have a lot more, all coming up right after this. Hey, Get up and go. The preceding was furnished by Major League Baseball. The Detroit Tigers have lost two in a row. They're in third place, three games behind the Yankees, and here's how they stack up. Lou Whitaker at second base, Bill Madlock the DH, Kirk Gibson in left field, Alan Trammell the shortstop hitting cleanup with Larry Herndon in right field. Darrell Evans will be at first base, Chet Lemon in center. Mike Heath behind the plate, and a fellow who looked like he was going to be a hero last night, third baseman Tommy Brookins. And you do need a scorecard for these Yankees. There's the defense. Uh, Cotto's in left field. Uh, Henderson on a disabled list. Kelly is in center field. Claudel Washington still has a bad arm. Winfield is in right field. We recognize him. It's Pagliarulo. Meekum is the shortstop. Bonilla, Manningly, Cerrone behind the plate, and Rasmussen. And Rasmussen, who just arrived, called up after having been optioned to Columbus on the 19th and recalled this morning. He is six feet seven and an eight game winner. Rasmussen trying to stretch a current winning streak to six. In other words, when they sent him out, he had won five straight plus two no decision. He is victimized somewhat by home run. He's allowed 25. And it'll be Lou Whitaker, Bill Madlock, and Kirk Gibson to start it off. Whitaker hitting 261, and we're underway. Ken Kaiser, the plate umpire. Whitaker trying to get rid of a bad taste as far as Detroit is concerned in the aftermath of last night's game when Gary Ward came up and homered against Mike Henneman to turn a Detroit victory into a defeat. Whitaker's a pretty hot hitter. He's hit eight of his last ten, doing his job getting aboard. And he drives one into right center, racing over his Kelly and Winfield, and it's in the gap. Kelly picks it up, and by that time, Whitaker is into second base, sliding with a double. 
You know the Tigers have been held without an extra base hit only twice this year. Back in April here in New York and in July against the White Sox. Otherwise they have at least one extra base hit every game they play. It's a ball club that can score runs. You just have to look at that lineup looking at Madlock and Gibson and Trammell and the rest of them. There was a pitch that was inside. Rasmussen's first two pitches he missed the strike zone outside came inside and Whitaker was waiting for him. Bill Madlock who came over and apparently has helped revitalize the Tigers and he has done that in the past to other teams. Breaking ball and it's going to cost him a strike. I hope he was decoying. You don't want your designated hitter to be bunting for a base hit if your name is Madlock in the first inning. Especially a fellow who has won batting championships four times over in the National League. Give you an idea just what he has done. Madlock has a history of hitting particularly well after being traded. But in the same league, he's finding problems over here, Vin. He says he keeps finding himself behind the count, no balls and two strikes because he can't adjust to the strike zone. Well, he's one and one now on a bluff by Rasmus and holding Whitaker at second base. One and one to Bill Madlock. Just starting out. The Tigers looking for their first win of the year at Yankee Stadium. They've lost all four here. If you don't think ball players don't keep statistics, he said, I struck out 19 times and 17 of those times, you know, the count was no balls and two strikes. <laughs> I said, well, whose fault is this? <laughs> two and one to Mad Dog. He was Mad Dog when he was very young. Later on, it's just been turned to Doggy. And Doggy hits one into the left field corner, foul and out of play. For Madlock, and he would be the first to admit it, he is extremely thankful there is an American League. Because he has come to a stage now when you want to talk about run, throw, field, and hit, he's one out of four. He can hit. Two and two the count. Chopper wide of third, short hop nicely by Pags to make the play. And holding at second is Whitaker. Fine play. Aguilarulo made a good play last night to his left. This one he comes in and short hops that ball and maintains his balance in good shape. A good spot for Meacham to be in. He went over to cover third base because Whitaker had some ideas once he saw Pagliarulo break in. So Kirk Gibson checks in, hitting 271, 14 home runs. We mentioned that Rasmussen has allowed 25, but he's given up only one home run to a left hand hitter here at Yankee Stadium. That was Harold Baines of the White Sox. Gibson hit one upstairs in the upper deck and right field last night. 0 and 1 to count to Kirk. We're just starting out, one down in the first inning. Lou Whitaker, who doubled at second base. Time, no pitch. That last pitch is the one Rasmussen has to get over that big curveball. He's got to get that ball over the plate and it sets up his fastball. Rasmussen was the opening day pitcher back on the 6th of April against Detroit at Tiger Stadium. He only allowed one run. It was a home run by Larry Herndon. He went seven innings. One ball and one strike. Dennis Rasmussen. Born in Los Angeles. Out of the Padre organization. Missed with a fastball, ball two, two and one. Rasmussen with 20 starts, but he has only completed two games. He has a high of nine strikeouts in a game. Two and one. Line drive off the leg of Rasmussen, deflected into shallow left field, and Whitaker will score. And it is one to nothing, Detroit. And Rasmussen is fortunate that he's able to walk around. Looked like he took a mean shot. So Gibson, a line drive single and a run batted in. They're going to have to check Rasmussen, and they're coming out now. Gene mm. Monahan and Lou Pinella. You can see Rasmussen with both his hands on his knees. That was a tremendous shot. You know, it's 60 feet, 6 inches, true, but when you finish up, you're about 55 feet from home plate, and that ball comes back to you in a big, big hurry. Especially if you're 6'7. 
to take another look. It hit him just below the kneecap itself. He's got that glove behind him, and he just can't get it back there in time. So you saw it hit off the knee, and Karam's in the left field. Follow through is so important, but you saw on that picture a great shot that when he finishes up, the glove is behind him, and that's a little tough to protect yourself with that glove there. The Yankees should buy a little bit of tape of that and just keep showing it to Dennis until he has himself a much better follow through. Watch his glove now. You'll see it is in a position where he can't defend himself at all. See, it's way back there. And he left that kneecap wide open, and he just did avoid serious injury. If it's about six inches higher, he's in a lot of trouble. So Rasmus has Gibson literally and figuratively single off him. Whitaker scores, and the batter now is Alan Trammell hitting in the cleanup spot. Ball one. Trammell hitting fourth. Took over when Lance Parrish was dealt away to the Phillies. And he's been on a tear for over two weeks now. He's hit higher than his overall average. And he's had 15 RBIs. It's a high fly ball to left field. It's playable. Henry Cotto is there. Gibson to the bag to tag, and Kirk will hold on a good throw into second base. And a good bluff by Gibson. A lot of times you'll see that base runner just kind of give it two steps, and you know he's not going. But Cotto wasn't sure that Gibson wasn't going. It was a good bluff. Right and he sees the ball is going to be caught. And watch how he takes off. And he's digging hard now. He stops, but he forced the throw. With Gibson standing at first, he has stolen a lot of bases, 19 out of 23. But the opposition does not steal bases on Rasmus. He's really only allowed one outright steal of second base. That was Tony Fernandez. He has a good move. He throws over to first base a lot, and then he's got that slide move, and then what he does, he hangs you up with that front leg. He'll get that knee up there and hold you, freeze you. Ball one to Larry Herndon, who has a half a dozen home runs. As we mentioned, he began 1987 by hitting a home run opening day against Rasmussen. Herndon has been the number one Tiger pinch hitter. and no strikes to count. The Tigers have lost six out of seven. Twice this year they've lost ninth inning leads to the Yankees and they find themselves three games behind a team they feel they have to beat. So we'll watch Gibson. 2-0. Tell you one thing, on that pitch of the plate, Gibson started a break back to first. He hung him up with that front front foot, that front leg. Dick Trasuski coaching at first. Alex Gramis coaching at third for Sparky. That was a great shot because you saw Cerrone point with his thumb. It was not a signal except to throw to first base. Catchers will do that. You'll see that a lot in the ball game. And there goes Gibson. They have him picked off. Mattingly down to Bonilla who makes the tag. The second pickoff for Dennis Rasmussen. As we said, he's tough to run on, and Gibson has just paid the bill. 1 0 Detroit. I am master of ancient art of karate, kung fu, and the Chinese a chuckle. Yeah. Oh. But the one about the socializing. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I always reach for a cold Miller Light. <laughs> Light tastes great. Light less a feeling too. Hey, anybody want a pepperoni? Ancient proverb: only one light beer, Miller Light. When you talk about the move that picked him off, watch Rasmussen's head right there. He looked to the plate. That's when the uh, Gibson broke. Now watch Mattingly. This is for a first baseman. Get way inside. You have a much easier throw to the second baseman rather than throwing directly over the runner's shoulder. Also, the first baseman has a good look at the second baseman and vice versa. So the Yankees really put on a fine all-around play there. Surprised Bonilla took that throw. Yeah, yeah. Thought maybe that the uh, shortstop Bobby Meacham was right there. He could have come into it, but uh, it was a good play. Here's the way the Yankees come up now. Roberto Kelly in center field. Remember, in case you missed it, Ricky Henderson is on the DL retroactive to last Sunday, which means he will be ready for the Kansas City series. 
So Kelly leading off, Henry Cotto in left field, and Don Mattingly at first. Dave Winfield in right field, the DH last night's hero, Gary Ward. The second baseman, Juan Bonilla. At third, Jim Pagliarulo. Behind the plate, Rick Cerrone, and the shortstop, Bobby Meacham. Defensively, and it's a good one in the outfield. Gibson, Lemon in center field. Sparky says if it stays in the park, Lemon will catch it. Hernan is in right field. Brookens, Trammell, and Whitaker around second base. And what a combination that's been and will be for a long time. Darrell Evans at first base. Mike Heath, who has played every position uh, for the uh, Detroit Tigers, I think, except uh, second base and pitch. He's played every place else. He's behind the plate. Mike Heath and Frank Tanana on the mound. Frank Tanana, a Detroit boy, he has won 10 and lost 7. He is 0 and 1 against the Yankees, 11 and 5 lifetime. Tanana suffered his first loss of the season back in April at Yankee Stadium. He lost 4 to 1. Sure, what a small world. I was in Alaska last week. You know that, right? There's a place up there called Tanana. Uh -huh. So when I saw it, I said, oh, Tanana, Frank Tanana lives there. As soon as I said that, the bus driver says, oh, you're a Tigers fan. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Tanana. Earlier this year, Tanana beat Seattle in two hours and nine minutes. He pitched a three hitter and got the job done with 84 pitches. So we'll see how he goes against Roberto Kelly, just called up from Columbus. speed for a strike of course he's a finesse pitcher although he did have a high of nine strikeouts earlier this year against the White Sox can't help but think of Red Barrett though 58 pitches to win is that incredible how can you do it oh and one little change slider looked like the way he just floated that and it seemed to cut in on the thumbs oh and two the count Tanana has been around he has surpassed the 2000 strikeout level he's had 30 shutouts in his career Yet, with glistening credentials, he is tied with Jim Clancy for being the losingest pitcher in the 80s. Big reason he was with bad clubs. You have to be awfully good to pick up losses. For instance, as you look at that, Phil Necro lost over 150 games in the 70s, and he's still toiling away. Two and two the count to Roberto Kelly. Kelly opens up and strikes out. And after a lot of slow stuff, he just came back in with a letter high fastball to punch him out. Here it is. Tanana has good control and changing speed just makes him a pretty tough pitcher to just level in on. And you can see he got that ball in. Even if Kelly hits it, he's not going to do anything with it because he had it in a pretty good spot. Here's Henry Cotto. One down first inning. The Yankees have the best home record in the major leagues. They've won 36 here at home while losing only 16 at the stadium. Right. They've beaten Detroit four straight here. Oh and one to count to Henry Cotto. Don Mattingly on deck. Fake the bunt that would move Brookins. And they count one ball and one strike. If you look at Mike Heath's glove, you'll see that one finger is hanging out, and you wonder maybe what that white thing is right by his thumb there. That's the thing that Johnny Bench used to always use to protect your thumb and to keep it from being bounced back. One and one to Cotto. Slow breaking ball inside. Cotto is a typical example of what has been going on with the Yankees. He began the season in Columbus. They purchased his contract on May the 4th. He was there for 15 games in June 2nd. They shipped him back to Columbus. They purchased him again from Columbus on June 5th. And here he is. He was outrighted on the 30th of June. He that broke in his webbing on that. The webbing has become the most important part. Don't you see that uh, what's sticking out of his glove is to protect your thumb. It kind of braces it. Two and one. The count to Henry Cotto. Boy, that thing took forever to get up there, like a soap bubble. <laughs> Catch him with a pair of pliers. 
There you go. 29 roster moves, two or from Columbus. I think somebody figured out it cost over $4,800 in airplane tickets to make those moves. Just missed inside. Three and two to Henry Cotto. They even have a name for it. I think they call the yo-yo roster moves. The San Francisco Giants are making a lot of moves. About as many or even more than the Yankees. And down goes Cotto way out in front of the off-speed pit. It looks like he started that swing sometime early this morning, and the pitch came late this afternoon. Tanana's a big guy, and the change of speed, look at that, he's way out in front. I tell you, you need speed, placement, and movement, and you change speeds, uh, it gives you uh, almost an extra pitch, and he's got good movement, he's got good placement, and obviously changing speeds very well. Not how hard, but where you're throwing it, and he's been very effective. Now his severe challenge with Don Mattingly who has a look at a breaking ball away ball one one and oh Mattingly of course very much in the headlines home runs in eight straight games 22 put outs extra base hits in consecutive games just rolling along one and one Mattingly like Wade Boggs likes to go deep into the count to see the pitchers pitches two and two three and two do not bother him. One ball and one strike to Don. Sidearm fastball, but he missed outside. That's one secret of Mattingly's success. Tanana trying to come by way of first base, and Mattingly didn't give an inch. Two and one. Off speed, and it's a roller back at first. Evans feeding Tanana coming over, and the first inning is in the book. So the Yankees tiptoe through the first, and at the end of an inning, the Tigers won, and the Yankees nothing. Larry Herndon takes a strike, leading off the second inning. The Tigers leading one to nothing. Herndon was at the plate when Kirk Gibson was picked off, breaking prematurely in the first inning. They're going to check. No swing, says Drew Coble. And the count, one ball and one strike. Cerrone trying to get some help from somebody regarding Herndon. Fastball missed inside. Ball two, two and one. For the last three years, the American League Eastern champion was in first place to stay by the end of May. They really didn't have any runs in that last three-year period. But this year, it looks like they're going to wind up with a dandy. Last night Herndon was involved and of course the Tigers lost a one run game. It was somewhat of a freak play. You can see what happened on a base hit into right field. Herndon is rounding third and going to score with two out. Winfield gets the runner at third before Herndon scored. So they did not allow the run and of course they lose by a run so Herndon had to chew on that all night. Here's Darrell Evans. Evans hitting 255. Darrell with 21 home runs and playing just about every day. It's a great tribute to him. He has struggled considerably, however, against left handers. He is hitting less than 200 against lefties. So, Darrell Evans. Fists one foul. He got jammed in the count 0 and 2. One to nothing in favor of the Tigers. If you weren't with us, Lou Whitaker doubled and Gibson singled off Rasmussen's leg. The ball caromed out into left field and the run came home. Herndon at first, held on by Mattingly. And Evans promptly hits it down the right field line, foul and out of play. Darrell Evans, who is a DH and the first baseman for Detroit, is 40 years old, which would make him the oldest everyday player in the majors. Sparky Anderson says that Evans' attitude has a considerable influence on this Tiger ball club. One and two the count. 
So in a sense the Tigers have the veterans Evans 40 Madlock 36 and then the rookies like Noakes and Henneman. Bow back. One ball and two strikes. Darrell Evans. He'll be followed by Chet Lemon. There's Chet. Whitaker and Evans, the only left hand bats along with Gibson, three of the nine hitters against Rasmussen. One run, three hits for Detroit. Nothing across for the Yankees, just the second inning. Big slow, so the Tigers get a, a Tanana pitch, and Evans strikes out. Big breaking curveball, which is his best pitch. He had that fastball in and out, and then really got Darrell Evans off stride, although he had a big cut, but it was all arms. He had already shifted his, his weight, it all been forward. Here's Chet Lemons, who is fighting a slump. His average now 264, but he's had just one hit in his last 20 at bats. A very short lead by Larry Herndon. He's not about to pay the price that Kirk Gibson did. Herndon has one stolen base. The opposition in the red against Rasmussen. They've stolen five, but the Yankees have caught eight, and he's had two pickoffs. Breaking ball hit foul over the head of Alex Gramis in the count on one. Couple of scores. Toronto two and a half games back of the Yankees, and they're down to Cleveland right now, three nothing. Scott Bales and Jim Clancy. The Giants trying to catch up after the Reds knocked them off last night, leading 2 0. Will Clark hit one out. The Reds leading the Giants by three games, and Houston by four and a half. Foul back. At the start of today, the Cardinals leading Montreal by four, the Yankees leading Toronto by two and a half, and Detroit three, and Minnesota leading California by two and a half, and Oakland three. Oh and two the count. Chet Lemon, who's been striking out lately, about a third of the time, hits this one foul down the right field line, back into the crowd. Ask Sparky about uh, any strategy as far as running, and he says against Rasmus, and he said you just don't like to do it because you really have to guess pitch, and I don't like to guess pitches. You know, in Detroit, right behind his desk on the wall is a sign, which is good for all of us to remember. Here's the strike two pitch. Fouled away. The sign right behind Sparky desk and he uses it as a constant reminder. The sign says each 24 hours the world turns over on someone who is sitting on top of it. Fastball and a high fly ball to right field. Winfield going back on the track and he'll make the play. So Lemon just a little late on that fastball. Two down, Herndon holding at first, and Mike Heath coming up. I like Sparky's other sign too, or he can leave me alone, I'm having a crisis. <laughs> <laughs> Lou Pinella, who has already put Ricky Henderson on the DL retroactive to last Sunday. He's going with a ball club that's struggling, and yet. In the face of adversity, the Yankees have won five straight and they're two and a half in front of Toronto. Here's Mike Heath. Heath was originally signed by the Yankees. Off speed, ball one. And his original position was a shortstop. Back in 1973, he played in the Yankee organization and actually wore a Yankee uniform in 1978. Then went over to Oakland, St. Louis, and now Detroit. And he can give you a pretty good job almost everywhere. Couldn't believe that he had played everywhere except pitching second base. And Sparky calls everybody by, I guess, their baptismal name. He says Michael was a great acquisition. Michael. <laughs> the 2 0 pitch is high, ball three. Last year, he hit over 360 against the Yankees. 
So Mike Heath, who had a dismal year in the National League with the Cardinals, came back to the American and is doing very, very well. 3 and 0. And that's ball four. He snuck up on the plate just as Rasmussen turned his head. He crowded that plate. He was taken all the way, and he forced him outside. That'll bring up Tommy Brookins, who has a five-game hitting streak. Brookins hit a home run last night with a man aboard, and it looked like he had given Detroit the win. And then Gary Ward hit one with a man aboard to win it for the Yankees. Brookins with that 242 average that's about where he figures to hit. He has never hit 250 or better in the last six years. When he hit that home run last night it was the first home run he had hit since June the 12th. Oh and one he has eight. Fastball one ball one strike. He's got a great sense of humor. I asked him about a story I had heard if it was true. He said when Chris Patero went back to the mm -hmm. minor leagues, he said to him, don't worry about it, Chris. Look at it this way. I'm the only guy ahead of you. <laughs> oh. Herndon at second, Heath at first, two out. Breaking ball missed. So Rasmussen with two out, digging a little hole. And Mark Connor going to go out to the mound to try and counsel him. Rasmussen we mentioned earlier had won five five straight he had two no decisions but they weren't too happy with his earned run average he was over four and they sent him to Columbus just the way Connor was talking and acting and the guys were looking at each other I guarantee you he just simply said quit trying to nibble and throw some strikes well we see now he comes right back with a strike two and one to Tom Brooken. Fastball. I'll tip to the plate in the count two and two, and that took a bite out of Rick Cerrone. And what's the umpire doing? Looking at the ball. You got that right. Of course, Cerrone, you have to really watch him if he takes a look on the arm. After all, he made his debut as a pitcher against Texas. <laughs> Threw a knuckleball, and there, he also said he mixed in a spitter. <laughs> and he pitched to Mike Witt. <laughs> two and two. Two on, two out. One nothing Tigers, top of the second. Fastball piled off. Well, Tommy Brookins up there with the count two and two. Brookins during that five game hitting streak is hitting over 470, so he is a pretty hot hitter right now. Tigers have him up there with a chance to hurt. So with a three and two count, Larry Herndon will be going from second. And Mike Heath will be going from first. Heath has pretty good speed. He can score on the extra base hit. So the run is poised and at the ready with a full count. Runners go. And it's fouled off. So Herndon returns to second and Heath to first. The Tigers and the Yankees played last night, today, they play tomorrow. Next week, the Yankees go to Tiger Stadium and start a four game series on Thursday night. Runners go. Fastball popped in the air off first base. Mattingly coming over near the seats, but he has a play. No runs to Alan Trammell. The Tigers at this stage are still just one game back in the loss column. And another thought, in each of the final four weekends, Toronto will be playing either Detroit or New York. So it figures to be a dandy in the American League East right down to the wire. And this is the time of the year then where the air starts to get a little thin. Oh, a little tougher to breathe. Dave Winfield. Followed by Gary Ward and then Juan Bonilla. Winfield went the distance in the All-Star game. And since that time, he's hit 200. Dave hitting overall a 283 and the big guy with 21 home runs. Hit off the end of the stick. Bad hop. Hits Whitaker in the chest, but he has plenty of time and one down. The Whitaker with the 
the luxury of playing second base you just keep the ball in front of you. He's down on the ball. It just hops over his glove, but being in front of it like he was, he's able to block it and makes really an easy play out of it. Plenty of time. Last night's hero, Gary Ward. They got a knee-high fastball and hit it inside out against Mike Henneman into the right field seats to give the Yankees the victory. Ward with a dozen home runs. There's ball one. Ward has hit about 100 points higher than that against Detroit this year. One of those 12 was the big one last night. Change, and it's a fly ball to right field. Herndon started in on the ball. So two down. The difference, I guess, between hitting a fastball and a change. Felt like Tanana, too, Vin. He gives you what they call that nice, comfortable collar. You go back and you say to yourself, man, wait till next time. And you say that the next time. And you look up in the morning paper, you're 0 for 4. You've run out of next time. That's about it. Here's Juan Bonilla. Bonilla at one time with the San Diego Padres given his release and he's another fellow who has really been bouncing around those moves to and from Columbus. Ball one. You want to talk about an active bat before you he swings it. Watch Bonilla. He's got a nice loop to it. Makes a tough good hard fastball pitcher. One and all to Juan in there. One and one. He's at that stage too as he faces Frank Tanana. He is thoroughly enjoying, I guess you could call it a reprieve. Ball two, two and one. Bonilla now just about the first man to the ballpark and the last man to leave it. He began the year as a player coach in the minor. <laughs> two and two, and he was going to hit that thing all the way to Columbus. He says the Latin player doesn't mature until his early 30s. Mm -hmm. He's 31, I think. That's why they mature in their early 30s. Two and two. And that's fisted foul behind the plate and out of play. One to nothing in favor of the Tigers. Lou Whitaker double scored on Gibson single. It's Frank Tanana and Dennis Rasmussen. Yankees leading Detroit by three and Toronto by two and a half. Fast one got him looking on the inside corner. Boy, that Tanana does some job of lulling me to sleep and then he pulls the trigger. It's his third strikeout. We'll be right back after these messages from your local This telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. Then to give you an idea, Rasmus has made 44 pitches in two innings, 24 strikes, 20 balls, five of nine first ball pitches for strikes. Hmm. See what he does with Whitaker. Starts him down and away. Ball one. Whitaker doubled to right center and scored on the base hit by Kirk Gibson, and that's the ball game right now. One nothing Tigers. Top of the third. Last night's game, Whitaker had on a bright orange glove and a black glove, and I said, what's the significance of the orange glove? He said, oh, it's just a feel. Today, I'll probably wear two orange or two black. It's just a feel. There they are. One and one. Well, two, two and one. I Lou Whitaker and Alan Trammell, boy, they go together like those batting gloves. They sure do. Ten years. When they first came up, you would have told me that Trammell would be batting fourth and Whitaker would be the hitter he is. Just didn't seem like they were like two kids that just missed the little league bus. Yeah, Boy, they're stars. Mm. Foul back. Whitaker, who has 11 home runs this year, he hit 20 last year, and that's what they have done. Isn't that remarkable? And they've had over 25 third basemen, over 25 first basemen while they just roll along. Little chin music, ball three. Three and two to Lou Whitaker. has one strikeout. That was Darrell Evans. And he's walked in with an inside fastball. So Whitaker starts the inning 
and that means a very dangerous way to pitch. The leadoff man has gotten aboard in each of the three innings. Whitaker in the first inning, Herndon in the second inning, Whitaker in the third inning. Matlock is the only guy on a ball club that is allowed to put the hit and run play on himself. He doesn't have to wait for a sign. When Matlock was traded to the 1979 Pirates, they were six and a half games behind and went on to win. Low one. And the Tigers are hoping he was picked up by Detroit when they were six and a half back. And here comes Lou Pinella. And he apparently is not too happy with what he's seen. Rasmussen has good stuff, but apparently has a love affair with the off speed pitches. And it's one of the things they say throw strikes, use that good fastball. And it may be that Pinella, looking at the leadoff man getting on behind hitters, uh, he, he's just not going to wait too much longer. He has Brad Onsberg, a right hander, throwing in the Yankee bullpen. We'll see whether Pinella is just counseling his pitcher. Remember, Mark Conard went out there in the second inning. Pinella taking plenty of time. That was the case of where Pinella said probably to Cerrone, now when Kaiser starts out, you let me know and I'll head for the dugout. You can just find some time. Well, he got it off his mind and off his chest, telling it to Rasmussen after the walk to Whitaker and a one ball, no strike count to Madlock. Little foul out of play, one and one. Madlock for years and years, a remarkable ping pong player. You can see why he won four batting crowns. You talk about eye hand coordination. He still has it and he's 36. But he had super coordination. It's a pop fly into shallow center, a trio of Yankees. The minute man is Kelly and he will make the catch. Has anybody here seen Kelly? Bonilla gets shouted off to play. Looked like he was going to make it all away. Now watch him go after it. He thinks he's got it. And he all of a sudden he hears, I got it, I got it. And look him get out of the way. And that's the way it should be. Kelly's coming into the play. And he's got the control because he's the center fielder. It's a much easier play. So one away, Whitaker holding it first. And Kirk Gibson, who hit that shot just below the right kneecap of Dennis Rasmussen in the first inning. Gibson at the plate hitting 274 with 48 RBI. Right. 1-1. One, one. Coming off a bad July, trying to finish it off in a hurry. With that no shaven hair, it looks like he come off a bad night. Looks like he got here by raft. <laughs> Treasure Island. Ship sunk somewhere midst voyage. to Gibson Whitaker at first Whitaker has stolen eight out of twelve and swing for strike oh and two since the middle of May Detroit has not lost any of ten road series though they've been playing very well on the road they've had eight wins and two splits of course in losing last night that string is in jeopardy oh and two to Gibson Gets away from Cerrone and that does the job. That gets Whitaker over to second base. Takes away the possible force or even double play. Bounces in front of Cerrone. He did shift. Take a look at where that ball lands. That ball never did come back. Cerrone really was in pretty good position. He was down to block it, but you never know what's going to happen once it hits the ground. One and two, the count to Kirk Gibson. Whitaker waiting to be picked up at second base. And a pickoff play, but no throw. On deck, Alan Trammell. There's Alan tuning up. Gibson fouls up and away. Boy, he waited on that pitch a long time. For the Tigers, you remember that Gibson missed the first four weeks of the year with a ribcage injury. The 
Tigers weren't scoring at all with Gibson sideline. And they've been the highest scoring team in the league since he came back. A bluff to second. One and two the count to Kirk Gibson. Gibson last night had three hits. Gibson, you talk about putting on a gamer. Foul to it. I mean, Gibson looks about as mean as any player in baseball with the, the long, somewhat straggly hair and beard. Plus, of course, he's really put together. I mean, doesn't he look like you want to caption it and say soul survivor? One and two. Gibson is 6'3", 215. So Rasmussen trying to hit that outside corner at the knees and he's gone two and two. Where would you want it now? Still down and away, or would you? Oh, no, I wouldn't come inside. No. No way. And another fake. So Whitaker walk, wild pitch to second, waiting to be picked up with one out. Fastball fouled away. Pretty good spot. Down. And away. They had 50,000 here at Yankee Stadium last night. Another fine crowd today. The Yankees have drawn over a million and a half. They've been averaging 31, and they'll be way over 40 today, and I'm sure again tomorrow. And then the Tigers, who are averaging 22 a game, they'll have a four game series with New York next weekend. Fouled away. Still one to nothing, Detroit. Whitaker doubled and Gibson singled him in. Cleveland still has Toronto by the neck, 3 0 in the fifth inning. When you saw Cerrone rub across, we look at Pinello rub across his chest protector before that pitch. A lot of times catchers will use that to uh, switch the signal. If I rub across my protector, it's the second sign, you see. If I don't, it's the third sign or whatever. Two and two. Pulled on the ground to Mattingly, who'll take it to the bag. And on the play, Whitaker advances to third. Two down, and Alan Trammell about it. And I remember when Billy Pierce was with the White Sox and came over to the National League. The left hand to introduce the pitcher brush where that would tell you to increase the count. So either the catcher or the pitcher seems to be brushing himself off all the time. And then you have his count by the scoreboard. Which can get too complicated I sometimes. Bet. The man on second base is when I usually do it. Now he'll go back probably just one. That was. Started him with a high fastball. Trammell flied to left in the first inning. Rasmussen is making too many pitches. He's already made 64 pitches, and we're in the top of the third inning. That'd be 190 pitches in a game, and he's not going to be around for that. Of course, maybe it's one reason why he's only completed two and 20 starts. Right. Can't keep pitching behind hitters. When that hitter gets you two and zero, oh, three and one, he becomes such a a much better hitter and uh, you just don't last. One ball and one strike. Alan Trammell two out. Lou Whitaker down the line from third. Tigers lead 1-0. Fastball away. There's a shot that we had with showing a base runner and the pitcher coming to a set position. I can't understand why a pitcher, a left-hander especially, comes to a set position with the man on third. He can't, he can't really see him. He cannot see him. Look, he does not get a good look at him. Ball three. Why wouldn't he pitch off the full windup? It's a short windup, anyhow. You get a good look at him. Now he's got his back to the to the uh, base runner, and he, he just he has to sneak a one. Three and one. All fastballs, and he hit one into right center field, and that picks up the run, and it goes to the wall. And Trammell is into second base with a double, and I don't think he saw one breaking ball. A little surprising. One fastball after another, and it is two to nothing, Detroit. 
Trammell in that four slot has become a pretty good hitter and he puts it right in the gap and right center field. He just went with the pitch. So he didn't mix him up at all on Alan Trammell and Trammell makes him pay 62 RBIs for Trammell and Whitaker has been on twice and scored twice and the batter is Larry Herndon who is single to right field in the second inning two out fastball and he jammed it that might have been part of the counseling with Mike Connors and uh, Lou Pinella going out there and saying you know throw hard throwing a lot of slow stuff and off speed knocked the bat out of their hands really isn't that unusual I mean uh, they used to say you can't throw more than three curveballs but I've seen catchers go as high as ten. Oh and one. In fact, Tommy John was talking about that, about a, a big ball game that he won years ago when Thurman Munson, Munson was the catcher and he called 10 consecutive curveballs. Tigers leading 2 0, top of the third. Two out. Breaking ball punched on the ground to the right side. Bonilla is there to make the play. But the Tigers pick up one run, one hit, leave one. And at the end of two and a half innings, 2 0 Detroit. Tigers leading the Yankees 2-0 as we go to the bottom of the third. Mike Pagliarulo, Rick Cerrone, and then Bobby Meacham. Two of his 20 home runs have been hit against Detroit, and that's his right. 0-1. Oh Last night, Pagliarulo had a two-run home run against Walt Terrell. In there. The Giants increasing it. Will Clark has hit two home runs, one with a man aboard. Kevin Mitchell has chimed in, and it's 4 0 Giants in the fourth inning. The Giants beginning the day three back of the Cincinnati Reds. So that will take care of Pagliarulo. 44 year old Tommy John, who was going to coach baseball at North Carolina and instead has won 10 games for the Yankees this year. In fact, in his 20 starts, the Yankees have won 16 games. But he has become a vital force for the Yankees' success this year. Always an interesting guy to talk to, and he was telling me today about Ben Hogan. Cerrone takes ball one. And he said the most in-depth questions from a non-baseball person came from Hogan and he learned from him Hogan said he always knew which side of the fairway to miss his shot on change in there and Tommy translate that translates that to pitching he knows which side of the plate to miss on it was no accident no coincidence that when Don Mattingly had the 22 putouts Tommy John was the pitcher Two and one to count. Uh, Rick Cerrone, the pitcher and catcher. He pitched, in case you missed it, in an overwhelming game where the Texas Rangers beat the Yankees 20 to 3. High fly ball into right center. Coming in is Herndon, and a little unsure, he picked it off as Lemon came up in a hurry. And was never sure of it as Lemon kept moving. Lemon thought he was going to catch it as a center fielder, and Hernan just reaches over in front of him and gets it. You know, the other side of the coin of that one side of the game, I thought it was pretty neat what Sparky did in that 10 to 1 game. Reg Reggie Jackson coming up, he brought the right hander in, not to give him an easy pitch, but he said he ought to have a fair shot to, for a home run on his last time at bat in Detroit. Bobby Meacham fakes a bunt, takes a strike, and the count 0 and 1. And in that 20 to 3 game, when they sent Bobby Wood up to bat against Rick Cerrone, and Cerrone said they shouldn't have done that. He said, I, I could have been wild and hurt him. <laughs> the strike one pitch. By the way, when Cerrone pitched, they put the speed gun on his fastball, and I understand as high as he got it was 81. <laughs> one ball and one strike to count to Bobby. Ball two, two and one. It's 2 0 Detroit. Two runs, four hits. The Yankees, no runs, no hits. Tanana has retired eight in a row, striking out four of them. 
Meacham's been on and off the disabled list as well as going back and forth to Columbus. So Frank Tanana with a high of nine strikeouts against the White Sox and he has four already today. Two and two. And that's it to straightaway center. Lemon has it. That's that nine in a row retired by Frank Tanana. At the end of three it's two nothing Detroit. Here's a look back at a very special Olympic moment. An American tradition continues when the Yankees meet the Tigers or the Braves face the Dodgers. The memories are waiting next Saturday. Pitching, pitching, and more pitching with Dennis Rasmussen and Frank Tanana, two left-handers. Do you think it, the second time around hitting against a pitcher really helps the hitter? Oh, I think it helps him, but I don't know if it really helps mm -hmm. him when he's got the kind of location that Tanana has shown so far because he is changing speeds and he is spotting it well, and uh, that's two out of three. Yeah, very quietly, Tanana has retired nine in a row, but of course the Yankees went through that with Richard Dotson, who had a perfect game going, and they finally got to him. But it's interesting to watch how Tanana, by just changing speeds, you look up, he's retired nine straight, four strikeouts, and it looked like he hasn't broken a sweat. I think as you watch the rest of the game, watch how Mike Heath moves behind that plate, and you get a pretty good idea of the kind of control that Tanana has had. Well, we see what kind of control Dennis Rasmussen has. He's allowed the leadoff man to get aboard in every inning, and it's cost him twice. He has walked two, and he's allowed three, three hits plus one, four hits all told. <laughs> oh, and one. Evans knew he had chased a bad ball. He made up his mind he was going to swing at a fastball, and he was way out of the zone. Now he's regrouping, kind of taking inventory here. Darrell Evans has had a remarkable career just when a lot of people thought it was all over for him he has come right back to be just as consistent as ever I don't remember the numbers but one of a couple of years ago he had that bonus clause where he was five hundred and sixty three or sixty five people short and if he'd have spent twenty five hundred he would have had the bonus and he'd have collected twenty five thousand oh boy it was some kind of thing like that where he just didn't know how short he was as far as attendance no balls and two strikes to Darrell. One and two. Did he get a piece of it? He did, and he's still there. Saron couldn't hold on to it, and it's still one ball and two strikes. Remember the last time he was up, he struck out on a big, slow breaking curveball and looked like he was kind of maybe halfway looking for that. But with two strikes, you're just looking for the baseball. You're not really looking for a particular pitch. One and two. Fastball just to drive him out of there. Two nothing Tigers, top of the fourth. Rasmussen and Tanana. Fastball down and in, and he pulled it foul. So it's still two balls, two strikes. I'd say from the way he's pitching Evans, somebody had a little conversation with Rasmus. On deck, waiting his turn, Chet Lemon. And another fastball in on the hands. And if you were watching Cerrone give the signs, he put down curveball and Rasmussen shook him off and he came back with the fastball. So after striking him out on a slow curve, he's been going after Evans with hard stuff inside. Two and two. Here comes another one. Now he has changed. Remember when he was pitching to Alan Trammell? Every single pitch was a fastball. So it's the second time around, and maybe he's decided to just turn the book around. Fastball on the hands, hit down the right field line, foul, and out of play upstairs. Down the lines as short as you would want if you're a hitter. 310 down the right field line, 312 down the left field line. But then it falls away for 11 in deep center. Three and two. Line drive down the right field line, and that's in the corner. Winfield playing the cam, holding it to a single on a good throw. So Rasmussen 
who stayed with fastballs and Trammell single, changed his style on Evans and he single. And Chet Lemon coming up. Winfield plays the carom perfectly and gets he's got a good arm and he gets off to good throw and Evans doesn't have that kind of speed. He'd have just been a dead duck. So that is the fourth consecutive inning where the Tigers get the leadoff man on. Not much Winfield can do about that. And Lemon at the plate. Fly to right field in the second inning. He had a change up, if you remember. And it sent Winfield to the warning track. Ball one. Lemon 13 home runs, 48 RBIs. And what a difference a year makes, even though he is struggling right now with the bat. Fastball, one and one. Mattingly is not holding Evans on. Evans doesn't have any kind of speed, so Mattingly wants to protect that pull between first and second because Lemon can hit that way. Two runs, five hits for the Tigers. Nothing for the Yankees. Nine up and nine down. Tanana has pitched a perfect three. Fastball. He just stand with that pitch now, and it's as if everybody in the ballpark knows it. I'm surprised it's just one fastball after another, and he's in a hole. Two on, nobody out, and Mike Heath coming up. He's not going to stay with it very long, I'll tell you that, the way they're hitting him. Ball was up, and Lemon just pulls it, hits it very hard. And Mike Heath's the batter now, and the Tigers got something going. With two on and nobody out, Juan Bonilla over to talk to Mike Pagliarulo for a moment, and the second baseman not going back to his position. And Brad Arnsberg is up again in the Yankee bullpen, and here comes Lou Pinella. Whitey Herzog would refer to the way Dennis Rasmussen is pitching today. He would call Rasmussen a top stepper, and that's where Pinella has been. He's been on the top step or out on the field before inning. Pat Clemens, a left-hander, has joined Arnsberg in the Yankee bullpen, and Pinella wants to talk to Pagliarulo right after Bonilla did same. Heath, Brookins, and Whitaker with Heath and Brookins right hand batters. It may be that Pinella is just buying time and may make a U-turn uh, about the time he gets to the dugout. We'll see. I tend to doubt he was setting up a defense. Well we were talking before about the second time around for the hitter and it is very obvious that Rasmussen is pitching the hitters totally different the second time around. But he's not fooling anybody. And his fastball hurt him in the third inning and now back to back in the fourth. And Pinella, a top step. See what that left foot is? Yeah, that's what Eddie Lyons calls him, top steppers. The butt is foul, and that got Mike Keith a little bit in the face. Right down in the dirt and came up and got him. On one. Every time you do this, the bench jockeys really get on you if you're not hurt. Mike Heath is not, and it bounces right up and they say, Boy, you got some good wood on that one. Well, they holler. That's the old eye. That's it. <laughs> 0 and 1 to count to Mike Heath. Two on, nobody out. Fourth inning, 2 nothing Detroit. Mattingly and Pagliarulo looking bunt. And that's a strike. 0 and 2. Mike Heath, by the way, has not sacrificed this year. He had another quick look at Alex Grammis. 0 and 2. Chased it, too. So Mike Heath not only failing to bunt and move him over, but good measure chases one in the dirt. Looked like he was just intent on putting the bat on the ball and really chased one out of the strike zone, and that's a great big out. Double play can get him out of it now. You can see him hitting down on it, and he really chases the bad ball. Cerrone caught it on a bounce, so with one out and two on, Tom Brookins the batter. Brookins hitting 241. Fouled out in the second inning. There's that straight change. First one he's thrown in a while. Come to think of it, after all the fastballs, 
He threw a curveball in the dirt and got a strikeout, and now comes back straight change to Brooken. One ball, no strikes. Fastball fouled away. Evans at second, Lemon at first. One away in the fourth, two to nothing in favor of Detroit, trying to win their first game of the year at Yankee Stadium. They've lost the other four here. Breaking ball grounded to short. The feed for one. They'll get the double play. No runs, two hits, one left at the end of three and a half. Two nothing, Detroit. If you've ever dreamed the dream of a champion, now your sports fantasy may come true on NBC Sports World. If you've ever dreamed the dream of a champion, now your sports fantasy may come true on NBC Sports World. That's Tanana's work for three perfect innings. And of those strikes, 24 of them, 12 have been called, so they are taking a lot of pitches. He's allowed three fly balls and into the bottom of the fourth. Roberto Kelly, followed by Henry Cotto and then Don Mattingly. 2 0 Detroit in the fourth. Janana 0 1 with the Yankees this year, trying for his 11th win. On one. Evans, Whitaker, Trammell, and Brookins. Gibson, Lemon, and Herndon in the outfield. Heath behind the plate. Roberto Kelly. Playing, of course, for Ricky Henderson, who is on the disabled list in case you just joined us. Put on retroactive to Sunday. He'll be ready next week against Kansas City, which means he will miss the next five games with Detroit. Tomorrow plus all four in Detroit. Sore right hamstring has sent Henderson to the pits. 0 and 1. That, of course, was the big argument here. It's one thing for a player to be hurt in this day and age of high salaries. Suddenly, from the stories I read, some of his teammates questioned whether he was hustling or not. Now you get into is he hurt or isn't he? 1 and 1. Ball 2. I think there was one game where uh, he didn't run out of ball, didn't mm -hmm. chase one to the wall, and that, that kind of got him upset. So it's, it's, uh, it's a tough thing when the guys start to question you in the clubhouse. And, of course, we all learned a great lesson with James Rodney Richard in Houston. A little fly ball to center. Starting back was Lemon, but he has it all the way. The graveyard out there. 4-10 to straightaway center. One down. Henry Cotto struck out in the first inning. There's the expanse. You can get hurt down the lines, but you have the luxury of the long out to center, left center, and almost right center. There's a difference of about 25 feet. It's shorter to right center than left center. And that center field has been short. Yeah, and how? It was about 481, I think, way back when. Different time zone. Yeah. Good breaking ball for a strike. 0 and 1. The old Polo Grounds in New York was about 460, something like that, to the Eddie Grant Memorial in center field. Oh, good pitch. 0 and 2. I snicker because the Rocky Bridge is one of my favorite guys playing second base for the Angels. The ball went out to the monuments out there, mm -hmm. and he could hear the big guy coming down to get him. Scar, and he's howling, somebody throw me the ball. Miller Huggins, Babe Ruth, anybody. <laughs> Any 0 and 2 the count. To Henry Cotto, it's 2 0 Detroit in the fourth inning. Ball one. Did you read about Joe DiMaggio in the papers the other day? DiMaggio went to the racetrack. You know, oh, he wore I number five. That. Yeah. Retired number. Bet on the fifth horse. Bet $50, I think, or maybe $5. And the horse paid $55. Mm. One of the great strings of fives, I remember, was right here at Yankee Stadium. In 1952, it was October the 5th. Carl Erskine was pitching for the Dodgers. It was his fifth wedding anniversary. Game five. The Yankees scored five runs in the fifth inning. Ground ball to third. Tommy Brookins throws him out. Two down. 
Did Erskine feel lucky? <laughs> he won the game 6 5. <laughs> yep. And if I remember, I think it was five minutes past five when the game ended. <laughs> so that's the best string of fives I know of. Two down, and here is Don Mattingly, who grounded out in the first inning. Ball one. With that shot we just had a Mattingly stance right there. He's got a system. He says his head and his back leg in a straight line and the front leg of V. I V is what he calls it. Intravenous. Right. What that does is give him perfect weight distribution as far as he's concerned. He turns that toe in and that keeps his front shoulder from opening up too soon. Nothing by chance this fella. It is all worked out. And there it is, base hit number one. A line drive to left field to break the spell. So Tanana had retired 11 in a row, and Don Mattingly hangs a rope in the left to break it. And when you talk about hitting, what he says, I lay back and I want to trust my hands. There it is. Ball is outside, he gets the arms out, hit right over that ball, and he goes to the opposite field. He wants to hit line drives or ground balls. Doesn't want to hit it in the air the opposite field. What I marvel at is the way he moves his hips. He talks about turning his belly button and throwing it at the pitcher. He really does it. Here's Winfield now. The Yankees with a chance to get even on one swing. Winfield rounded out in the second inning. With a big guy 0 for 1, but he has 21 home runs. And 73 RBI. And there's that five. Five straight. DiMaggio did it seven. One ball, no strikes. Ball two. So Tanana now, first pitching out of a stretch for the first time, and faced with his challenge. On deck, Gary Ward. Two nothing Tigers, bottom of the fourth. Two out, Mattingly at first. Another soap bubble just floats up there. Two and one. You hear the expression these days about hitters diving in. Winfield is a good example. He's deep in the batter's box, and he'll come straight towards the plate as he takes his stride. You pitch inside, you're going to knock him down, even though you're going for the inside part. Two and two. The you know, big Winfield trying to get him even. You notice lately two vendors checking bats. We saw it with Guerrero and they're checking them here now. And of course they had a big rhubarb with the Mets on Howard Johnson's home run. Whitey Herzog, Tony Pena yeah. saying he had corked the bat. Well I guess that means we have officially stopped talking about the ball. Now we'll talk about the bats. Eventually they're going to get around to the talent on the mound, which is where the story probably belongs. Two and two to Dave Winfield. Ball three. There was a story in the paper I read, and this is hard to believe. There are 140 pitchers in the major league who have either been released by another team or have two years or less of major league experience. That means you have a lot of fellas on the mound who are not really equipped to be on the mound. Unless they've got a lot of insurance. Mm. And then they talk about expansion. Three and two. Mattingly goes and it's popped up. And what a great pitch. Winfield had all his weight on his front foot. And it'll be Lou Whitaker, the man in charge, so they leave Mattingly. Tanana now working on a one hitter leading two nothing and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Tonight on Saturday night murder mayhem madness with John Larroquette a man with a mission. The public desperately needs to be entertained. This ostrich like bird is a female Rhea. She'll probably never see that egg again because in the Rhea family, it is the male who builds the nest, hatches the eggs, and raises the young. I'm Marlon Perkins. Learn more about these and other unusual Argentinian birds in Realm of the Rhea this week on Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Saturday at 4.30 when you come home to Q6. 
Vanna White on the next PM Magazine. Remember a few moments ago, we showed you the numbers of Frank Tanana, the fact that his projection would be 108 pitches. But look at Dennis Rasmussen. What a contract. Lou Whitaker, Bill Madlock, and Kirk Gibson. And for all you good folks who have been watching the Giants Cincinnati game, delayed because of rain and interrupted, why well, pull up a chair and spend part of the time with us? It's two to nothing, Detroit. Frank Tanana has allowed just one hit, and Rasmussen has allowed the leadoff man to get aboard in every inning. Whitaker led off the game with a doubled and scored, led off the third with a walk and scored, and that's it. Two nothing, Tigers. Shot. And would you believe it? Five straight innings, a leadoff man is aboard. So Whitaker is two for two, and that would be seven hits for Detroit, and the batter, Bill Madlock, lost a hit on a good play by Mike Pagliarulo and flied to center in the third inning. Leadoff man gets on, man. You're checking the gas tank with matches. Boy, inning after inning. Back out of play in the count on one. It is not an official game, as you can see. The Giants leading six nothing, top of the fifth inning, and rain. On one to Matlock. Rasmussen. Pitching one of those games where the bullpen is throwing almost as much as he is. Brad Arnsberg and Pat Clemens have been up, and Arnsberg up again. Big spinner. One and one. That's a good point, Vin, because I tell you, you really have to know how to warm up, and a fellow like Rasmussen makes it tough because he I think he was about a pitch away from being taken out. Mm -hmm. And now you're up again. It's a yo-yo day out there. Fastball lifted into shallow right field. Bonilla out. Winfield in. Good over the shoulder catch by Bonilla. And Whitaker holding at first base. That's a tough play for an infielder. Bonilla seemed to have it all away and makes it look fairly easy. One good thing you notice he didn't need his sunglasses. It is not a bright day, and that helped him. And no appreciable win. So one away. And Kirk Gibson, who hit a shot off the kneecap of Dennis Rasmussen for an RBI in the first inning, grounded to third. Grounded out getting Whitaker to third in the third inning. Ball one, good save by Saron. I'm sure if you're a hitter, you walk up to the plate against a guy who is six feet seven, and the first thing you think of is he's got to throw hard. Sure. And he doesn't. A big guy like that, it almost feels like he's going to step on you too, and, and it gives you the feeling you're really hitting uphill. One ball and no strikes. Whitaker has been on base three times, scored twice, has stolen eight out of 12 this year. In at the knuckles. Of course, Sparky obviously wants Gibson to have his hacks, and he would just as soon keep Mattingly on the bag. And he's behind 3 0 to Gibson, and of course, with his power 14 home runs, 47 RBIs, and in a ballpark where it is such a short porch down the line, there's nothing automatic about Gibson taking. Well, you can really zero in 3 and 0, look for a particular pitch in your spot. Low fastball, low inside. And that's too high with a fastball. So again, Rasmussen is in a jam, and here comes Lou Pinella, who has made almost as many trips to the mound as Rasmussen and other Yankees have made to Columbus. And Brad Arnsberg will be coming in. And that will be all. So Dennis Rasmussen who was recalled from Columbus and arrived this morning. And 
for Big Dennis a long day's journey in the night. It is two to nothing Detroit, two on, one out. We'll be back. Brad Arnsberg, a right-hander out of Seattle, Washington, who lives in Oregon, and he'll be 24 later on in the month of August. He was one of five rookie pitchers to start at least one game for the Yankees last year. While he was at Columbus this year, he was 12 and 5. So Arnsberg trying to restore some order here, pitching to Alan Trammell and then Larry Herndon with two on, one out, fifth inning, two nothing Detroit. And it got away from Saron, and the runners move out. He just boxed that ball, and uh, Arnsberg threw it right by him because Saron just reached over, never did shift on that. Watch him right here. It's, it's pretty wide of the plate, true, but you can see that Jerome never broke on that ball. So the pitch moves along as Arnsberg immediately in trouble now. Second and third. Two nothing Detroit. Now with first base open, it makes sense to take the bat out of Trammell's hand and put him on. And Larry Herndon will be coming up with the bases loaded. One out in the fifth inning. And Detroit leading the Yankees two to nothing. Here's a spot to right hear Herndon, but it looks like he's going to be brought back, and we're going to have a pinch hitter, Sheridan. Pat Sheridan. I was going to say you go up there saying well he's walked one intentionally in a wild pitch he's going to try to get ahead of me and you just look for that fastball and get your cuts. So Pat Sheridan who finished up in right field last night it was Sheridan trying to catch Gary Ward's home run and he will hit and then stay in. He's one for eleven coming off the bench as a pinch hitter. Pat Sheridan. Pat Sheridan. So the Tigers with a chance to break it open and Lou Pinella now that Sheridan has been introduced and is officially in the game will now come in with Pat Clemens. So Arnsberg commits a wild pitch walks a batter and goes out and Clemens will now come in to try his luck against Sheridan. So it is two to nothing Detroit with one out in the fifth inning and the base is loaded. Here's another edition of Baseball Remembered. Old Spice presents Baseball Remembers. Brought to you by new wide Old Spice Fast Track deodorant. Fast Track blocks odor better than the leading men's deodorant. That's all out protection. Mickey Mantle remembers the joy of hitting his patented tape measure home runs. Every time I come up, I was trying for a home run. Uh, I, I, I love to see it go a long ways, you know. I never did just try to hit a single or something. Casey used to yell at me from the bench, and I still swung as hard as I could at it, you know. But when I hit the ball good, I could hit it as far as anybody. I hit one 565, I'm thinking I'm going to hit one 600 feet today, you know. I hit long home runs. When I hit the ball good, it was a home run. And I, I, I almost hit it out of the stadium twice, and... Uh, one of the times I hit it was a line drive. If it had just been about six inches higher, it would have made it out of the stadium. And, uh, when I hit it good, I knew it was gone. An American tradition continues when the Yankees meet the Tigers or the Braves face the Dodgers. The memories are waiting next Saturday. 25-year-old Pat Clemens, who was acquired by the Yankees with Rick Roden and Cecilio Guante from the Pittsburgh Pirates in a deal that sent Doug Drabeck, Brian Fisher, and Logan Easley to Pittsburgh. Clemens, who came up originally with the California Angels, two and two, he saved four, and he has a tough spot. Bases loaded, one out. He has to throw strikes and do it immediately against the pinch hitter, Pat Sheridan. Trammell is at first, Gibson at second, Whitaker at third. One out, fifth inning, two nothing Detroit. I think Sheridan spent some time this winter with Harry Walker uh, down in Alabama. Harry uh, helping him with his hitting. Well, the hat knew how to swing the wood. We'll see if he transferred it to a pupil. Strike. So Clemens goes right after him. 
Oh, and one to count. On deck, another left hand hitter, Darrell Evans. strike. Clements gets a little bit of a hesitation in his delivery. Once he gets that ball out of his glove and starts to play it, watch what he does with it when it's behind him. He kind of just a split second there. In motion. One and two. Matt Sheridan is a chip off the old block. His dad played professionally in the minor leagues. So the base is loaded, one out in the fifth. Two nothing Tigers. Breaking ball just missed, two and two. Tigers have left four men in four innings. Exactly what Clements did. Last pitch was just a good fastball to it right for the center of the plate. Much to say, I'm going to give you my best pitch, try to hit it. So Sheridan strikes out, pinch hitting with the bases loaded, two down, and Darrell Evans the batter. Evans struck out and singled a right against Rasmussen. Lou Whitaker at third, Kirk Gibson at second, Alan Trammell at first. The Tigers are seven games under 500 against left-handers. One reason why Rasmussen started and now Clements is in there. Fouled away, 0-2. And, and of course, Gibbery started last night. And the Tigers, if there is a left-hander available, the Tigers figure to see him. And that's it. Now trying to root Clements out of the jam. 0 and 2. Hit foul off third upstairs. Still 0 and 2. He really pulled the ripcord on that one. That was an emergency swing. He just did get the bat on it. In the inning, Whitaker singled with one out. Gibson walked. A wild pitch moved them along so they walked Trammell. And now Clemens after striking out Sheridan trying to get Evan. 0 oh and 2. And it hits home plate, bounces back on a wild pitch. And Gibson is going to score from second base. The throw gets away and all the way around to third goes Trammell. And it is 4 to nothing. Just when it looked like the Yankees and Clemens might have been out of the woods, the wildest pitch this side of Barnum and Bailey. And the Tigers pick up two. Watch where that ball hits. Right on the corner of the plate, goes straight up. Sarone knows it's behind him, doesn't know exactly where it is. And Kurt Gibson, a tremendous piece of base running, he didn't hesitate. And you can see their motion to come on in, and it is not even close. The most dangerous part of that is the high five that he gives. Here comes Gibson sliding in. I mean, he gets up. See that throw get away. Trammell almost had a shot. Yeah, they could have scored three. And that's probably hit into center field base hit, and it has become a big inning. Five to nothing in favor of Detroit. They've gotten two wild pitches in the inning. And then Evans' base hit makes it 5 0. Whitaker and Gibson belong to Rasmussen. Trammell belonged to Arnsberg, and Clements is now on his own. Well, it shows you how close you can come to getting out of an yep. inning, Noah. Well, at one pitch he fouled off. He really just did get a piece of it. It was an emergency swing, Evans, and he stayed alive, and then the wild pitch follows. There's Chet Lemon. Fastball hit to the hole. Nice hop for Bobby Meacham to get the force play at Bonilla. But the damage has been done, and the Tigers come up with three in the top of the fifth. 
And at the end of four and a half, five nothing Detroit. Ladies and gentlemen. Nine years ago on this date in Atlanta, Gene Garber shaking no to his catcher, pitching to Pete Rose. Strike three swinging, and Pete Rose consecutive hitting streak snapped at 44. The starting pitcher was Larry McWilliams, and Garber finished it up. Talking about finishing it up, Pat Sheridan is going to finish it up for Larry Herndon in right field. Talking about streaks now, did you see Rick Dempsey had that injury? He yes. said, just when I got that two game hitting streak going. I know it. Well, he was hot. He was really red hot, and boom, injury takes said, him out of it. And Bo Jackson went through him like he was whipped cream. <laughs> You happen to see that thing? I saw it on the news. He yeah. threw a rolling block into him. Getting ready for football. Yeah. Gary Ward flied to right field in the second inning. And hits a change down the right field line, slicing foul and out of play. And the count on one. The Tigers scored a run in the first, a run in the third, and then pick up three big ones in the fifth. Frank Tanana has faced only one above the minimum. 13 batters in four innings, allowing just one hit. No balls, one strike. Fouled away, 0 and 2. Ward, Bonilla, and Pagliarulo. Bottom of the fifth inning. The Yankees in first place, they've won five straight, and they've certainly been doing it with great pitching. And with Ricky Henderson and Willie Randolph sideline, they're having trouble manufacturing a lot of runs. So a five to nothing lead seems almost insurmountable the way they've been playing. Scored six last night, however, to win six five. Two and two the count to Gary Ward. Another foul ball down the right field line. You just watch Tanana pitch in and out, up and down, changing speeds. If you had a radar gun on him, you wouldn't sign him. No, and tell you nothing. Two balls, two strikes. Oh, wow. Just changed up, and Gary Ward way out in front of it. That's five strikeouts for Tanana. Now, this is really the art of pitching. That's what it is. Look at this. Mm. In and out, changing speeds, and the radar gun cannot tell you about placement. It can't tell you about movement on the ball, and it can tell you how fast, but when you change speeds, it's like having two, three pitches. Where's Juan Bonilla? He struck out in the second inning. Tommy Brookins plays him about even with the bag at third. The outfield straight away. Ball one. And on deck, the left hand hitting Mike Pagliarulo. 5 nothing Detroit, bottom of the fifth. Five runs, eight hits for the Tigers. No runs, one hit for the Yankees. Line drive single to left by Don Mattingly. Fastball hit to right center and deep. Sheridan chasing it to the wall. It's gone. of his home run come with the bases empty and he's leading five to one big curveball ball one and you may have picked out Willie Randolph among the Yankees congratulating Bonilla he's in uniform on that bench rooting his guys on one and all the Pagliarulo he struck out in the third inning ground ball to the right side Whitaker has to wait for Evans that makes it a little closer Two down in the fifth, and Rick Cerrone coming up. The crowd is getting on Cerrone. Not 
that much, but still you can hear them because of the couple of wild pitches. One of them was the one where he didn't shift. You could blame him on that, not yeah, the not second one. That second oh, one. no. But you see, that's the difference in that position, Ben, and you know, I, I'm, I'm serious when I say this. Fouled away. Infielder misses the ball, the outfielder will get it, right? Outfielder misses the ground ball, the fence will stop it. But when the catcher misses the ball, hey, it's the manager. <laughs> oh. 0 oh 1 to Rick Saron. 5 to 1 Detroit. Foul outside of third, 0 oh 2. The one thing that I've always felt badly about, seriously, for catchers, you can see a catcher make a great defensive play, maybe short hopping a ball that no one ever applauds. Right. You know, they'll applaud the infielder, the outfielder for making a fine catch, but I think what it is is they're more in relief, a sigh of relief rather than a round of applause. It wouldn't be bad to give him a round of applause once in a while. Drive to right center field, Sheridan is there. And that's that. One pitch hit out by Juan Bonilla, his first home run at Yankee Stadium, and at the end of five, the Tigers and Tanana 5 1 over the Yankees. Juan Bonilla chipping in with his first home run of the year for the Yankees. They now have 129, and they're on that kind of a pace. And that sun has popped through here, Vin. So I don't know if the sunglasses will come out, but it's a little bit brighter than it was earlier. For the Tigers, the sun is still shining very brightly on them. Mike Heath, Tommy Brookins, and Lou Whitaker, and they're leading 5-1 in the sixth. Heath walked and struck out in the fourth inning, unable to bunt, and then chased one in the dirt. One ball and no strikes to Mike. He had a tough time, especially last year. He hit only 205 with the Cardinals. That's a big swing from 205 last year to 291 this year in the American League. One and one. Grounded to the hole, base hit into right field, despite the effort by Bonilla. So Heath is one for two and he's been on base and it means the leadoff man is on again. Six consecutive innings the Detroit leadoff man has reached. But he had given it a good effort but it was by him. And that'll bring up Tommy Brookins. Brookins fouled out and hit into a double play. 0 for two. Ags is shortening up the third looking for the bunt. With Whitaker and Madlock to follow. And it's a foul ball, 0 and 1 to count. So Clements has the same problem that Rasmussen had. The Tiger leadoff man keeps getting aboard. Whitaker has opened up the game innings three times and has scored each time in the first, third, and fifth. Just for the heck of it, you know what I would do now if I was catching with Thomas control? Call a pitch oh, out yeah. to see what's happening. Mm -hmm. Because he may be switching off here and you might break up a play. All in one. A lot of times pitchers will do that to help the catcher out, and you just look at the batter's hand to see if there's an indication. But Cerrone is checking the bench to see if they want him to pitch out. Full swing base hit into left center field and that's in the gap. So Heath can take the extra base and go to third on a long single by Tom Brooken. So the Tigers are now after Pat Clemens. The pitch out is, is a lot of times as a play it, it is also serves the purpose of breaking up a momentum or breaking up a feeling like that something going to happen. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to get a base runner every time but there's some managers just don't like it. Mm -hmm. Well, the Tigers now have 10 hits. Everyone in the lineup but Madlock with a base hit. Madlock is over three and he's on deck. Lou Whitaker scored three times. Right. Charles Hudson is down in the bullpen. Big right hander tuning up. Got off to a great start. Eventually fell on some lean time, shipped out to Columbus, and now he's back. One and one to number one, Lou Whitaker. Right, one and two. First 
first and third. That's outside. Ken Kaiser, the plate umpire, is trying to get the scoreboard squared away. <laughs> and he applauds the score when they finally get it right. <laughs> Big Ken. Try to Rochester. Fouled right into Sarone's mask. The Whitaker is still there. Five to one Tigers. Five runs, ten hits. The Yankees one run, two hits. Rasmussen went four and a third innings, charged with four. Arnsberg charged with a run. And Pat Clemens finishing up. Ground ball wide at first. Out of the glove of Manningly, who has no play. And it looked like he took his eye off the ball to see what the runner was doing. Yeah, oh, he's looking straight up. He doesn't look the ball in the glove. You can really see that from up here. He was watching to see what the runner was going to do. And Heath was breaking the minute the ball was hit on the ground. He's looking at the runner. So Mattingly, here's where the peak comes. And by this time it's too late. He has no play at all. So it is six to one Detroit. So Mattingly, who made a bad play last night when he had a possible double play and threw it into left field, now makes a bad play on the ground ball. And Matlock gets a bunt down. Clements has to go to first. And the runners move up to second and third. Matlock watched that punt all the way. He wanted to see who was going to field it. He got his men over. With first and third and nobody out, I'm surprised Manning didn't even look to see for the runner because you know the run is going to come. You've got to go after him to prevent the double play. It shouldn't have been any surprise. So second and third, the infield is up. And Kirk Gibson with first base open. You don't think he's been taking a lot of extra hitting, do you? He's got tape on all his fingers with a bare hand. He has been particularly tough picking up runners from third base with less than two out. And of course, that's the mark of a guy who really hits in a clutch. Gibson, 13 times, has come up with less than two outs and a runner at third. 13. And he has got the man home 10 of the 13. One to count. A little dribbler, Mattingly is going to go to the plate. Too late. The run is in. Once again, that was a contact play. As soon as that ball's hit, Brookins came in and a high hop, and it's a little bit too late. Mattingly got the throw off, but too late. It is a simple fielder's choice. A slow roller, Manningly did everything he could with the ball, but it just wasn't hit hard enough. Tried to get the sliding Brookins who was in there. So it is seven to one Detroit. What was a very tough game has broken wide open in the fifth and now in the sixth. On the fielder's choice, Whitaker takes third. So you have first and third, and Alan Trammell the batter. Trammell is fly to left, single to center, walked intentionally. One for two. Allen hitting 329. And that's a fly ball to center. Coming up for it is Kelly, tagging up his Whitaker. The throw by Kelly is way offline. So the Tigers have ripped it open now. It is eight to one Detroit as Allen Trammell picks up his second RBI. And Whitaker scores for the fourth right time. So Lou Whitaker has been on base four times. He has scored four. Well, what a leadoff man job that is. Oh, perfection. And Pat Sheridan, who pinch hit for Larry Herndon and struck out in the fifth inning, now comes up against Clemens with a runner at first and two down. The runner is Gibson. Eight runs, ten hits for Detroit. One run, two hits for the Yankees. The Tigers, who had lost four straight here in Yankee Stadium, trying to win their first one in a big way. Right. Tell you, it's nice to leave, man. Kind of innings. You want to have a roll call, see if anybody got hurt. No balls 
and one strike. It all started when you realize it when Sparky Anderson switched from the bunt. He had a runner at first. He had Brookins around as if to bunt on a pitch. Then he took it off. And Brookins singled, and the next thing that changed the whole inning. One ball, one strike. So for Pat Sheridan, he strikes out for the second time. However, it's a three-run sixth, back-to-back three-run innings, 8-1 Detroit. I keep telling Don that basketball is the best sport for fans. We give them the fast break, the slam dunk, and the three-point shot. Nah, baseball's the best sport for fans. We give them the squeeze play, the grand slam, even the ball if they catch it. But we both agree on one thing. We care about our fans' lives. So before the game, line up a designated driver so we all get home safe. Hey, I know the best sport. Oh, yeah? What? Me, the designated driver. Yeah. yeah. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. NBC's baseball coverage continues next week. Start off with Major League Baseball, an inside look. And then Don Mattingly and the American League East leading New York Yankees come right after the Tigers again in the Motor City. Some of you will see Dale Murphy and the Atlanta Braves traveling to the West Coast to play the Dodgers. Last month's hottest player in the National League, Pedro Guerrero. Tradition is here. The memories are waiting on NBC Sports. Bobby Meacham followed by Roberto Kelly and then Henry Cotto in the bottom of the sixth, eight to one Detroit. For those of you who were watching the giant Cincinnati game, six nothing Giants in the fifth inning, it is still raining, but of course you can bet they will wait quite a while on that one. One ball and no strikes to Bobby Meacham who applied to center in the third inning. He hits it down the left field line, hooking in the corner, and will go foul. Toronto, two and a half games back of the Yankees. And the last time we saw their game with Cleveland, they were losing 3 0, and nothing has changed except the inning. It is now the bottom of the eighth inning. The Indians evidently. Losing the services of Joe Carter, who was hit by a pitch on the hand. We don't know anything more than, than just that. That was Scotty Bales and Jim Clancy. One and one to Bobby Meacham. You know, I look at Meacham, Meacham, and I think about Ozzie Smith and how many shortstops he sent out. Oh. Meacham, Uribe, and Santana were all in the Cardinal chain at one time, double A, triple A, and A. And old Ozzy just keeps farming them out. Yogi did that to catchers oh, here. Oh, yeah, there's always some star who clogs the river for everybody else. Pee Wee did it in Brooklyn. Yeah. If I remember correctly, Bobby Meacham's mom was and maybe still is uh, the president of a, of a Dodger fan club. <laughs> so he really has a baseball family. It's a high fly ball to left center. Lemon and Gibson, it will be Chet Lemon. So Meacham, a fly ball, one away. Once again, we'd like to remind our viewers we'll be selecting the NBC Miller Lite player of the game at the conclusion of the ball game. Roberto Kelly struck out and flied to center. At first, when I saw that, I thought it was a misprint. I thought his name was Robert O'Kelly. <laughs> but it's Roberto. If he gets on, he'll show you some speed. And I'm glad to see the young fella chewing bubble gum instead of that other stuff. Mm -hmm. Ron Kittle is still on the DL. He's got a bad neck. Of course, he's always had back trouble. And with Henderson out, Kelly has a chance to play and show his wares here. That's a weird injury to Kittle, too. Heard it carrying the player off on a stretcher. They can have the darndest injuries. One ball, one strike. Gary Carter got hurt playing catch with his kids in the backyard. Remember Terry Harper, the outfielder, dislocated a shoulder, waving a runner home. Two balls, one strike. 
fellas get hurt, put it on their sanitary stocking. Yeah, I, got, I used to have a list of that. I had to find it again and add Kittle to it and a couple of them. There's all kinds of weird things. When I'm shifting a car. Three and one to count. Recently, there was a player get hurt. Oh, no, I guess it was a coach playing basketball with his wife and hurt his back. Henry Cotto has struck out and grounded out. You're getting like the National Enquirer. That's right. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff going on. It's also 8 to 1 Detroit. Sixth inning. Cotto followed by Mattingly. The Yankees trying to get off the floor. Frank Tanana has allowed only two hits up to here. Strike. For Detroit, they have stayed with the same five man rotation. The only other team to do that this year, Houston. When it gets down to earned run average, and that usually is a payoff area. Toronto is 3 8. The Yankees and Detroit are virtually the same, though the Yankee earned run average was changed a little bit today. One and one. Fly ball to center field. Two down and Don Mattingly coming up. Grounded out, broke the spell with the first Yankee hit in the fourth inning. He is hit in five straight. the home run record first of home ring in a straight and he said that's great I got a two thousand dollar raise, raise for doing it right and then the pool of money and then they'd split their salaries two balls and no strikes to Don Manning somebody did some figuring on salaries they do that all the time at Babe Ruth's biggest year he had eighty thousand dollars one year and if you broke Mattingly's salary down for playing time he did seventy four thousand dollars a week $74,000 a week. A better year than Oliver North. Yeah, better than anybody. Here's ball four. So suddenly here with two out in the sixth inning. Janana has walked two and Dave Winfield coming up. He's gone out of his pitching pattern because of that lead. One of the toughest things you have when you get a big lead like this. You don't want to walk anybody so you get away from your pitching pattern. You really have to guard that. I mean by that the, the curveball the change of pace you say well I'll throw fastballs for strikes and pretty soon you've lost that rhythm and Tanana you say OK it's an eight to one ball game. You got a guy up here one swing could put you three runs closer. So Dave Winfield grounded out leading off in the second inning popped up for the third out with Mattingly aboard in the fourth now has a chance to shake up the ball club ball one. So Tanana got Meacham then he walked Kelly and with two out he's walked Mattingly. Billy Muffet is going to go out to the mound and talk to Tanana and Mike Keith has gone out to listen. And Tommy Brookins will come in from third. It's very difficult to uh, in an eight to one ball game to, to work the game and pitch the game like it's a one run game but you do get in and out of your rhythm. I'm sure people have asked you this before. They're always saying you know, what does the catcher say to the pitcher. Did you ever in your career do you have a memorable moment something that happened on the mound in the meeting that you stayed with you forever. Oh yeah. Really. Oh sure. Like what. Against the Dodgers bases loaded. Warren Hacker called me out. Duke Snyder hitting. And I wonder what he wanted. He said you know what? I can get some shotgun shells wholesale. You're kidding. I'm not. Oh great. <laughs> Happy Hacker. <laughs> Well they weren't talking about shotgun sales right now with Dave Winfield up there. It's a howitzer. One ball and no strike. Two on two out sixth inning eight one Detroit. Foul down the right field line upstairs. One and one. Yeah. 
Winfield followed by Gary Ward, another right-handed batter. The Yankees have Pagliarulo and Mattingly left-handed, and of course Bobby Meacham is a switch hitter. Everybody else right-handed. One and one to count to Winfield. Fastball, a chopper, foul. Outside of third and the count one and two. So back to second base goes Roberto Kelly. And back to first goes Mattingly. 8-1 Detroit in the sixth. Ball hit the shortstop, trammel to Whitaker for the fours. So no runs, no hits, and two left. And at the end of six, it is 8 1 Detroit. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Tuesday, four women, each with a dream, trapped by one woman who controls them all. That's why I'm so successful. The Beverly Hills Madam, Tuesday. Intelligent Life at NBC. Interesting concept. It's Al, an alien with an appetite for mischief. He's quick. I'll give him that. And the manners of a con man. You're my idol. Some days he'll make you want to scream. <laughs> but everyone. Yo, Rocky the man. Well, almost everyone loves Al. Cross my heart. Monday at 8 when you come home to Q6. Q6 TV presents Summer Fun 87, a spotlight on the communities of the greater Northwest. Hi, I'm Bob Anderson, Fire Chief District 9 here at Nine Mile Falls. Along with the volunteer firemen, we'd like to invite you out to our annual Dam Day celebration, August 8th. We'll have a fun run, fireman's ball, and lots of other activities. Bring the whole family out for a great day of fun. Nine Mile Falls, August 8th. Bringing summer home to you, Summer Fun 87, a public service of Q6 TV. Young pediatric patients get a lift. The story at five. A reminder, tomorrow, Sports World brings you another installment of sports fantasy. Among the sports fantasies fulfilled, a group of high school athletes competing in a mile run against Eamon Coughlin, Michael Jordan in a slam dunk contest, Ivan Lendl, the number one ranked tennis player in the world, facing match point against a viewer. That's tomorrow on NBC Sports World. Guy wants to play tennis against Lendl for match point. <laughs> Only take a minute. <laughs> Serve. Charles Hudson will become the fourth Yankee pitcher. Dennis Rasmussen, Brad Arnsberg, Pat Clemens, and now Hudson. And he'll be pitching to Darrell Evans, Chet Lemon, and Mike Heath. Hudson has not been pitching much at all. In fact, since the first week in July, he's only worked 11 innings. Getting off to a fine start, but he's been struggling. One ball and one strike. Evans struck out, single to right, single to center. Fastball to strike. One and two to count. Tigers eight runs, ten hits. Yankees one run, two hits, and one error. Two and two. On deck, waiting his turn, Chet Lemon. Remember, the Tiger leadoff man has gotten on base six consecutive innings. in the air foul behind the plate Cerrone coming back to the base of the screen he will not have a play Tiger scored a run in the first added another in the third three big ones in the fifth the Yankees came back with a run in the bottom of the fifth and a home run by Bonilla and for good measure Sparky's gang came right back with three more though so it is eight to one Detroit if the Tigers win and it looks like Toronto would lose 
Detroit would leapfrog back into second place. Found away. I have the ultimate of ultimate statistics. You're kidding. With that ball just hit by Darrell Evans. Really? He has now fouled 13 balls into the stands. Oh, I love it. You think America wasn't <laughs> sitting on that stat? That <laughs> a boy, Elliot. <laughs> Three and two. <laughs> Fourteen. 14 now, huh? <laughs> wow, everybody's counting. <laughs> Eight to one, Detroit. In a game like that, you do yeah. those things. You know what we used to do here in New York? We right. talk about that, but I didn't do it. I was too small. But sitting in the bleachers in the old polo ground, what they do in these one-sided games. And that's a one-sided game because the leadoff man is going to get on all of them. On first, on second, on third, on home. And it is 9-1 Tigers as Darrell Evans bombs one into right. And for Evans, his 22nd home run. Upper, upper deck. I mean, he really jacked up on that one. But here's what they used to do in the bleachers in the old polo ground. They used to, they used to bet. Guys would get so it'd be a boring game. So they would bet on pitch it. Ball, strike, fly ball, ground ball, base hit, anything you want. But they would bet maybe from with the guy in the upper deck. And the other fellas would be in the bleachers. Lemon a strike. And he'd have tennis balls with holes in them. So you'd say, I bet you buckets, and you'd each put a, a dollar in a tennis ball. The loser would throw the tennis ball to the winner. You'd take the money out and throw the ball back. There's another drive into left field. And we were talking about the tennis balls in the bleachers. There's two baseballs in the bleachers now. And Charles Hudson is wrecked by Evans and now Lemon. And it is 10-1 Detroit. If you're Mike Heath, you walk up just saying, well, you see the two guys in front of me have just hit tremendous home runs. You have to start thinking like that. So Chet Lemon hits his 14th home run. And now here is Mike Heath, maybe ready to go down, at least thinking about it. going to stop him. Would you believe that? I That's mean, it. how obvious. He's throwing him out of the game, and I tell you what, that was a joke. And Canella doesn't think it's a joke, but that was not a pitch that got away. No, he was thrown at In him. fact, it wasn't even a good inside pitch. No. We have it again. That was a bad pitch. Kaiser is definitely right. Yeah, what he's doubt. doing. And Pinella's wrong. Because you could see the two home runs before him. I mean, they had pretty good control, and if he gets in his eye, but he threw behind him. Behind him is the worst. That's it. If he'd gotten that ball up, Tennessee is to back into that ball, so Kaiser took it, and that's what you're going to have to do yeah. to stop that. He's 100% correct. He was trying to come inside high and tight, is what Pinell is saying, and Kaiser said, look where he threw him. And umpires know when pitchers are throwing at hitters. I mean, what they need is the backing, and apparently they're starting to get that kind of backing. And Kaiser is motioning as if to say that pitch was that far behind the hitter. And I got to be 100% behind Ken Kaiser. And I would be behind him just yeah. by the size. <laughs> and but Hudson is gone. He's he He's going to get a fine for that, and I would hope that that kind of fine money wouldn't it be great to give it to Bat and help the old-time ball players. Okay, so the Hudson does not flow gently here in New York. It's choppy waters. Pinella really upset, but ah, it's I tell you, Pinella's just angry from the entire day. Yeah, it's a day of frustration. Oh, sure. Rasmussen had him on the top step. The argument always is, how do you know where he's throwing? But in a spot like that, we alluded to it. Well, we pretty much oh, said that yeah. he's got to be thinking about it. The two guys, now he throws behind him, and uh, that's it. I wonder if we have that pitch. We don't have it. But if it almost hit, well, it was so far behind him that Heath instinctively begins to back and almost backed into it. Okay, Pinella gets Cerrone up. That's about right. He has a motion for a pitcher yet. He's got to have somebody come in. And he doesn't know what to do. Well, Tim Stoddard, among others, down in the bullpen. I'm just surprised. 
it was so obvious that there was no skill. You would think Hudson would have waited a pitch or two, but I mean he was gone. Evans a home run, Lemon a home run, and the first pitch to Mike Heath behind him. So Kaiser threw him out, and he was right in doing so. Dave Rigetti and Tim Stoddard throwing in the pen. Of course, Rigetti pitched hard and tough last night. Oh, I wouldn't think he'd go with Rigetti. I wouldn't either. Worst kind of a game for Pinella because his pitching staff now is in tatters. He used Rasmussen, Arnsberg, Clements, and Hudson. And of course, would have lost last night's game with Rigetti pitching. Would have blown a four to one lead with Gidry, except for the heroics by Gary Ward. So they're going to Tim Stoddard in a mop up game. Stoddard has four saves, a three and two record, and somebody has to go out there and take it. So that was not only an expensive pitch made by Hudson, it was a very foolish pitch as well. Well, somebody has to carry a big burden, and it's Tim Stoddard. And as far as Pinella is concerned, when it rains, it pours. He's down 10 to 1. And talking about rain, the Giants leading the Reds 6 0 in the fifth inning. It has been raining a long time, and we were delighted to at least be able to give you more baseball for those who are watching the Giants Cincinnati game. And since so much time has passed since we left Cincinnati, we will keep the game here and then if and when that game picks up and there are further developments we will keep you apprised. But right now you can watch what is turned out to be a little bit of warfare. After back to back home runs by Evans and Lemon Charles Hudson throws one behind Mike Heath Ken Kaiser throws Hudson out of the game and Tim Stoddard is asked to carry on. Pinella is still annoyed visibly although he has calmed down considerably. He had a few brief words with Charles Hudson. So he gives the load to a guy who is six seven and two fifty. And Stoddard will try and carry it now. He has inherited a one ball no strike count. Strike one and one. One and two the count. Jim Wellwander has come out of the Detroit dugout and Wellwander is on deck to bat for Brooken. Look out for that. So the breaking ball takes care of Heath and now the crowd's going to get all over Heath. What a day he's had. He hadn't done anything. They throw the baseball at him. Now the fans are on him. And Mike goes quietly back to the dugout. The batter now is well wandered. He just lost the bat. He tried to throw the end of that bat to hit that ball, but uh, never could hold on to it. And all the way out to Pagliarulo. Well wandered, without a doubt, is a character. In fact, some of the quotes attributed to him mean we've got another one around. They asked him what was the difference between the minor leagues and the major leagues, and he says there are fewer bugs in my apartment. <laughs> There's a ball hit to left field. I like what he did with his first hit and his first home run. Put in the glove compartment. <laughs> and I asked him why. He said, well, as soon as the glove compartment fills up, I'll get a new car. There you go. That and makes sense. You had to realize he was a little different when he once played a 36 hole golf tournament in heavy work boots. And while he lived in Toledo, he had an apartment without furniture and he used aluminum foil for drapes. Sparky calls him a pool hall kid. Yeah, he is a pool hall kid. Here's Lou Whitaker. On one. Whitaker is doubled in walks, singled, and aboard on an error. And he has scored four times. It'll be a moral victory for the Yankees just to keep Whitaker off the base pad. Oh, one. 
seven straight innings the Detroit leadoff man has gotten aboard and for good measure here in the seventh inning Evans got aboard and hit it out and then for the fourth time this year when Lemon hit a home run the Tigers had back to back home run game. I tell you that does make you mad though when you're a guy like Heath as we see Pinella. I remember over at the Pittsburgh club we didn't have that good a team. Kiner and Bell would hit home runs and then I'd come up and they'd throw at me. Didn't you feel good though like one no. of the big guys on the block. Are you kidding. <laughs> I mean they were paying attention to you and everything. They're, no. <laughs> Little chopper back towards Stoddard. Big guy has to hurry and Whitaker's aboard again. And it'll be a nub single for Lou Whitaker. The so Whitaker has had a walk, two singles, a double, reached on an error as he just has beat Stoddard's throw. No, I'm not. There's nothing really funny about having somebody throw at you. Well, you know, in a certain situation when they try to pitch you tight, you understand it, but that is just frustration. It's emotion showing, and I mean, that ball then becomes a weapon. I, I never, uh, to me, that's the only time I used to get upset. Dave Bergman is now batting for Bill Madlock. Ball one. I wonder, I guess there's no particular book price as far as throwing the pitcher out. And come to think of it, you know, that might be the first time I've ever seen a pitcher thrown out of a game for throwing out a hitter. I've seen them warn. Warned. I've seen pitchers thrown out for arguing. I think that's the first time I've ever seen a pitcher ejected. Well, I know what they ought to do with that fine money, where they ought to send it, but they're not listening to me. Two balls and no strikes. High fly ball to right field, Winfield using his glove as a shield. So Bergman, a fly ball, the inning is over. Two runs, three hits, and a man left. At the end of six and a half, 10 1 Detroit. And now another edition of seventh inning stretch. Gatorade Thirst Quencher presents the seventh inning stretch. Gatorade is thirst aid for that deep down body thirst. This Detroit pitcher won a career high 21 games in 1986, posted 223 strikeouts, and led the major leagues in shutouts with six. Can you name him? Tiger pitching ace Jack Mars came up aces again in 86. Master of the split-fingered fastball, Mars recorded 21 victories for a total of 123 in the 1980s, most in the majors. And he's the only pitcher to win at least 15 games in each of the past five seasons. Mars also pitched a no-hitter against the White Sox in the first week of the 84 season when Detroit won the World Series. Oh, it's not just human nature, this need to race the wind. But unfortunately, man cannot fly. Oh, but horses do. Jim Whalewander, who batted for Tom Brooken, stays in the game at third base. And we go to the bottom of the seven, 10 to 1 in favor of Detroit. Gary Ward, Juan Bonilla, and Mike Pagliarulo. And there's a hopper to third, so Whale Wander is busy right away. Sinker in the dirt, dug out by Evan. So Darrell Evans makes it look easy as he backhands one out of the dirt. Interesting, all you have to do is compare the leadoff man in every inning. The Tigers are seven for seven in the leadoff man getting on. The Yankees are all for seven. And it's 10 1 Detroit, and here's Bonilla. Struck out and homered in the fifth inning. Tanana looking over at Whale Wander and then kind of turned his head as if say come on up here. Well Wanda moves up. One ball and no strike. 
I'll tell you what, the name on the back of his shirt, he's going to have to put on a few pounds because he's you can't see two of the letters. That's right, too many syllables. Good change, just stiff-wristed in there. One ball and one strike. Remember, for years, listening to pitching coaches teaching kids how to throw the chain, and they always would say it's as if you were pulling down a window shade. It sounds so easy. Yeah. And then you take the ball yourself and say, okay, I'll throw a change, I'll pull a window shade, and you bounce it in front of your foot. Or hit your foot. Yep. And he's just out there flipping them in with strikes. Two and one. Not that one. Ball three. Then the other theory with a change, jam it way back in the crotch of the thumb and index finger, and then circle the index finger and the thumb on the side of the ball. They call that the circle chain. But the big thing is your delivery. Well, that's why the split finger fastball is so effective because you use the arm speed. You, you, you throw it as hard as a fastball and you don't have that kind of grip. Ground ball to Whale Wonder. Better throw, two down. Mike Pagliarulo coming up, struck out and grounded out, 0 for 2. Mike Pagliarulo. Cleveland defeating Toronto 3 to nothing, with Scotty Bales getting the win. Jim Clancy lost it. Stewart picked up a save. That means that Toronto stays where it is, two and a half behind the Yankees. Lost it. Stewart picked up a save. That means that Toronto stays where it is. Two and a half behind the Yankees. But Detroit winning this one will be two games back of the Yankees and a half a game in front of Toronto. Tomorrow Rick Roden will be pitching for the Yankees and Jeff Robinson will be pitching for Detroit. Two down, seventh inning, 10 1 Detroit. Foul ball, one and one. Valurulo, 0 for 2, batting 240. Two years ago, Tanana beat the Yankees three times. So when he's healthy and on his game, he'll give anybody fits. He's trying to beat them for the first time this year. And a drive to right field. Sheridan, however, is there. And Pat puts it away. So the Yankees roll over in the seventh. And at the end of seven, the Tigers 10. And the Yankees 1. Paid attendance today, 55,103. I don't know if it means anything to a player. Do you ever remember the largest crowd you ever played before? Any kind of a, or about, about a small crowd when you are in Pittsburgh? Oh, I played in Pittsburgh, How yeah. How small about it? Uh, well, we played a game here at Yankee Stadium. It was 900. It was a makeup game, and uh, we bought new everybody personally. It I was would, kind of those by invitation only games. I remember as a kid coming to Yankee Stadium before they rearranged it, and I think uh, you could get almost 80, 81,000 here. And then, of course, in the Coliseum in Los Angeles, uh, they had 93,000. Yeah, I've never seen that big a crowd. Yeah, that's big. But in 55, Saint, seventh largest in the majors this year. St. Louis uh, was like 35,000 in the old days. Pittsburgh, we never did jam it. And, of course, if you're George Steinbrenner, you're saying to yourself, that's just great. That's yeah. just great. I've got the biggest crowd. It's a Saturday, nationally televised, and it's oh, all yeah. Detroit. That's right. i got a bomb on my hands. And somewhere in Michigan, Tom Monahan is sitting quietly, feet propped up, having a pizza, looking at Dan Pasqua now playing right field. And what if it's the first game you've come to and you see Don Mattingly play? Yeah, you right. Won't believe it. You'd say this guy at first base, he's what? Ball one to Kirk Gibson. Gibson Trammell Sheridan due up against Tim Stoddard, eighth inning, ten to one Detroit. so far today single literally and figuratively off Rasmussen he almost took his kneecap off 
grounded out walked and was aboard on a fielder's choice. He has two RBIs. Give him 49 for the year. Showdown time again next week, next weekend, starting Thursday night at Tiger Stadium. That'll take care of Gibson. Took something off that pitch, and Gibson a bit out in front. Alan Trump. It's a good look at it. Looks like he's set up all right. <laughs> Can't understand. That's one of those batting practice. Let's see how far I can hit it swings, which you normally wouldn't take in a game, but it's so one sided. And that's a strike to Alan Trammell. Oh, and one. If it had been a fastball, it had been maybe ripped, but when he took a little off that thing. Fly ball into right center field. Pasquas there. A couple of scores for you. We told you that Toronto lost to Cleveland. Meanwhile, Oakland leading Minnesota one to nothing in the third inning. Frank Viola and Dave Stewart. Oakland three games behind Minnesota. And the Cubs leading Philadelphia three nothing in the third. The Cubs ten and a half back of the Cardinals. That's line down the left field line and it'll go in the corner. So Pat Sheridan goes breezing into second with a stand up double. So when Gibson struck out, that broke the string. Seven innings, seven leadoff man reaching. But now with two out, the Tigers still come up with their 14th hit, an extra base hit. And here is Darrell Evans. Struck out, single twice, and then for good measure, Homer. So Darrell is three for four. Tigers who have only played two games this year where they fail to get an extra base hit have five extra base hits today. With a crowd of 55,000 today, prospects of big houses at Tiger Stadium because they get 52,000 in Detroit. High drive into right center field. Going back on the ball is Kelly at the wall. Leaps in the air to take a home run away from Darrell Evans. That ball is out of here otherwise. So Roberto Kelly makes a leaping catch to turn the Tigers away, and it's still 10-1 Detroit. Here's another look at Roberto Kelly going high up against the wall to take a home run away from Darrell Evans. So Evans already hit one today. Now we go to the bottom of the eighth inning, 10 to 1 in favor of the Tigers. The Yankees have Rick Cerrone, Bobby Meacham, and Roberto Kelly. And left hander Frank Tanana. Six outs away from his 11th win. Cerrone, a couple of fly balls to right field. So Rick 0 for 2, hitting 231. Ball one. There's a one hopper off the glove of Trammell and on out into left field. Well, it'll be a base hit for Rick Saron. Usually a game like this it gets lost. That's only the third base hit. That's all. And here's Bobby Meacham hit a couple of fly balls to center field. The only Yankee run was a one out home run by Juan Bonilla in the fifth inning. with two on for only the second time today with a couple of walks they have two men aboard in the sixth inning two on nobody out and Roberto Kelly at the plate he's 0 for two struck out fly to center and walk Tigers have led all the way 
one in the first, one in the third, and he had three in the fifth, three in the sixth, two in the seventh. The only run that Pinella has had so far today was a home run by Boni in the fifth inning. And that's going to be hit in the left center for a base hit. Sarone will score. On his way to third is Meacham on the third consecutive single in the inning. And they're jumping on that first pitch, which is pretty apparent that Tanana is going to try to throw some strikes, and they're not going to let him get a strike. They're just going to jump on it and get a base hit. So it is 10 to 2, Detroit. Mark Thurman and Eric King throwing in the Tiger bullpen. King, a right hander. And they're on the phone to the bullpen in case Tanana has run out of gas. And the hitter is Henry Cotto. Ball and no strikes. There's Eric King. One and one. Three hits for a run here in the eighth inning. The Yankees a long way to go. Detroit sitting on top of a 10 to 2 lead. Deck Don Mattingly. One ball, two strikes. Canella, remember, has Pasqua playing right field, finishing up for Dave Winfield. Pasqua hitting behind Mattingly. Dozen strikeouts for Frank Tanana. You see him working on kind of curveballs for strikes, setting up that fastball, and then boom, gets it by him. That was his first strikeout since back in the fifth inning. And now here's Mattingly, grounded out, singled, and walked with Pasqua and Deck. Oh, and one. Normally, Mattingly takes that first pitch. You can almost think that he was looking for that fastball. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed it. He was so annoyed. He swung and missed. He scratched his helmet. I wondered if it felt good. Scratching your helmet with a batting glove. That's a, <laughs> that's like a long distance call. And he hits a little dunker into right field. Sheridan is not going to get it. So they'll move up 90 feet. Kelly goes to second and Meacham scores. First RBI since July 18th, and it comes on a little flare to right. He'll take it gladly. It's a big curveball. He really doesn't have that Mattingly swing, almost like he's fooled. Now uh, you can see he just reaches out and hits it on the end of the bat and serves it. That's one of those hits that when it lands on the grass, it hardly bends the grass. Here's Dan Pasqua now. Remember, Winfield was taken out, went over three. Then I have the left-hand bat up there, and Dan Pasqua. Breaking ball strike. Two runs coming over here in the eighth inning on four singles. You know, when we were kids growing up here in New York, we'd take a tennis ball, cut it in half, and turn it inside out and scale that half a tennis ball. That's the way Tanana throws that curveball. It's amazing how he can sail it. Look at that. I mean, that's terrific. That's a half a tennis ball. That's the kind those guys just throw in the polo grounds when they were betting. Yeah. <laughs> just drop it down. <laughs> he comes sidearm and he makes him give, and then he throws that big roundhouse American Legion job. There it is, way out in front. Look at his back foot off the ground. Well, that's some pit. Seven strikeouts for Tanana. His high this year is nine. And Gary Ward, the batter, glide to right, struck out, grounded out, 0 for 3. Flip job for a strike. He's throwing 54 on the radar gun, and Heath is throwing 62. That's <laughs> right. It's going back harder than it is coming in. So Tanana really doing a job here. He's leading 10 3 in the eighth inning. Pickoff play, but no throw. Trammell saw a lot of daylight, so he went to the bag. one 
missed with that slow curve. Ward hit the game winner last night, the home run to right field. Two out, eighth inning, 10 3 Tigers. Fastball. So after he gives you all those tennis ball curveballs, every now and then, zap. One and two. Remember Stu Miller? Oh, sure. At all time. I remember one day Walker Cooper asked Larry Getz, he said, You sure he threw that ball? <laughs> <laughs> One and two. And another fastball, but he missed. Two balls, two strikes. Tigers have had it their way all day. As much as 10 to 1, now it's 10 to 3. Fastball. So the runners will be going. Kelly from second, Mattingly from first. Two out on the eighth inning, 10 3 Tigers, and a full count to Gary Ward. On deck, Juan Bonilla. And that's hooked to center, but Lemon is there to handle it. The so Ward hits it hard at the center fielder. The Yankees come up with two on four hits, and they leave two. 10 3 Detroit. Lou Pinella and Ken Kaiser having a few words and Kaiser punctuated the conversation by gesturing and saying something to the effect in front of 55,000 and then later on he said I'm I'm doing my job so I'm sure Pinella was still talking about Charles Hudson's eviction after that pitch to Mike Heath followed the two home runs by Evans and Lemon it is 10 to 3 Tigers in the ninth, and Lemon at the plate right. Kaiser calls a very quick strike. I don't mean as far as time elapsed, but his, his hand gesture, if you blink an eye, you're not going to see him call it. He just kind of pulls up on it is what he does. Yeah, especially when you're behind him. It's hard to see that arm move. Besides him, everything's behind him. <laughs> oh, and two. I think that's one reason why the scoreboard operator was having some troubles with the count. One and two. Then there's the Dutch Rennert call, which you see in Queens. And here. Breaking ball. So Lemon comes up empty after taking a big swing. And Mike Heath will be coming up. Mike has walked and struck out, singled and struck out, and knocked out Charles Hudson. <laughs> or maybe Charles Hudson knocked out Charles Hudson. Little roll at a shortstop. Bobby Meacham cranks it up to take care of Heath. Two down, top of the ninth. He still has his bat in his hand. He ran all the way down to first base with his bat. That's nice. You know, it was like last night, Vin, watching the game. Everybody congratulated Gary Ward, and I was watching, and Don Mattingly, after he congratulated him, went right over to the bat rack. I asked him today, he said, oh, no, after every game, I take my bats and put them in my locker. Oh, yeah. It's like a golfer counting his clubs at the end of the round. They're playing now, and the Giants breezing over Cincinnati 7-1. to one. There's a shot into right field. So Jim Whale Wander, Whale's one. Got to give it a little pause there, pal. Yeah, yeah that's the first time I've come across that. <laughs> it's not exactly like Mr. Smith. Whale Wander. Whale Wander. <laughs> so a two-out single by Whale Wander, and here's Whitaker. Whitaker's been on base every time. He's reached all five at bats. He has scored four. What a day he's had. Up, he does it again. And Whale Wander will stop at second base. <laughs> Whitaker, what a day is right. Four hits, a walk. He reached on an error. He has scored four times. And the batter will be Dave Bergman. The Tigers going up there and hacking on the first pitch. Heath grounded to short. Whale Wander single to right. Whitaker singles to right. We'll see what Bergman does. Ball one. A note. Nine times this year the Tigers have had someone have a four hit game. Whitaker the latest Let's go. 
Two balls and no strikes. Whale Wander at second, Whitaker at first, two out in the ninth. Ten to three Detroit. The Yankees will have Bonilla, Pagliarulo, and Cerrone. In the bottom of the ninth begins Frank Tanana. And that's a line drive grabbed by the shortstop, Meacham, and the inning is over. Two hits, two left. And at the end of eight and a half innings, Detroit 10 and the Yankees 3. America is sending her best. The swift. The strong. The athlete. August 29th, America's best will be competing in Rome. And NBC will be there. Next week, we'll get underway with Major League Baseball, an inside look. Joe and I will go to Tiger Stadium and see the Yankees and the Tigers pick up the rematch. And some of you will see the Braves versus the Dodgers. That'll start at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Bottom of the ninth inning, 10 to 3 in favor of Detroit. Mark Thurman will now pitch the ninth inning. So Frank Tanana went eight innings, allowed three runs, six hits, walked a couple, and struck out seven. And Thurman will try and finish it off for him. For the Tigers, they have been rather hitterish in two games here in New York. 30 hits. But with 30 hits, they'll only have a split of 14 hits in a losing game last night. And the Tigers with 16 hits and a 10 to 3 lead today. Juan Bonilla struck out, homered, grounded to third. So Bonilla won for three. came to Detroit in a deal that sent Dave LaPointe to San Diego. Chopper to shortstop. Bad hop. Trammel up the ladder then throws it in the dirt and it hits Darrell Evans on the side of the face. So first it took a bad hop but the bad hop winds up hurting Evans even though it took a shortstop. He got a nasty crack. Uh-huh. Here's the hop that makes Trammell make an off balance throw instead of the usual. And now what? He didn't really gun that ball. He kind of flipped it over there. And Darrell got caught between hops. And it takes a bad hop in front of him. And you see him hit him on the side of the face. One reason I'm sure we've had 22 hits in the game, which means a lot of people have been running the bases. And consequently, there are divots all over the infield. Now this looked like it was going to be a routine one hopper to the first baseman but look how high it came up right over Darrell's left arm and got him on the side of the face and it might have cut his face if he had sunglasses on and it did. So Evans evidently suffering a cut above the left eyebrow and Dave Bergman the D.H. will now take over at first base. So that's some play. Two bad hops. Trammell had plenty of time when he came up with the bad hop to really gun it over there, but he threw it right into the ground, and I thought it was going to be a short hop, but it was a little farther out than I thought, and it just took a bad hop when it hit the ground. We saw Billy Consolo and Veda Pinson, Tiger coaches. We have some scores. Cleveland defeated Toronto 3 to nothing. They won't lose ground to the Yankees, but they will to Detroit. The Giants, meanwhile, trying to knock off Cincinnati and get to within two. Oakland leading Minnesota one to nothing. They're trying to win and get to within two. Chicago leading Philadelphia three two. They're ten and a half are the Cubs behind the Cardinals. So you're up to date. And now the batter is Mike Pagliarulo. Check swing, pop fly. And Whitaker will take care of it. One down. 